This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time, then you Don't give up what you want, take it back. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Episode 611 Tuesdays, we've been celebrating professional wrestling here live from the Sorgatron Media Studios here in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. I am Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter. We're getting ready to preside over the presidings of pro wrestling chat and talk and podcasting. That's my intro tonight. Uh, <laughs> we got a hell of a crew in us with us uh, tonight. And uh, we got a lot. It is WrestleMania season, and it's Mayhem Mania season, deep, deep into Mayhem Mania season. And I got, again, a great crew with me tonight, first of all, uh, with us. Hey, cameraman Rob is joining us hey, here in the studio. Uh, so sweet Van, uh, Big Van Vader big Van shirt. Vader, like, yes. With the cool, like, like Uber Mantar, pre Mantar, the proto Mantar uh mask <laughs> i, I kind of like it, it looks it's it's relatively subtle you know, yeah, for, yeah for a wrestling t-shirt the, you know you'd look at it and you know what it is but, yeah yeah you know. you know you know like what yeah. is that elephant man on your t-shirt that's mm-hmm. kind of weird he's into some i bet that is hentai not the wrestler uh mm. yes looks like something out of that new rampage movie mm. yeah. wow uh-huh which is also starting to rock so it connects. You heard the voice. You heard the subtle tones of Larry. <laughs> the subtle tones. Subtle tones of Larry. Dulcet, subtle, uh, raspy tones. From deep, deep in the basement of this uh, Sorgatron Media facility. Yep. I just like claimed the entire building as if we owed it. <laughs> yep, the whole building. <laughs> nope, nope. That we just have a room. Renting out some closet it's space like, downstairs. Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> For his mystery, mystery earthquake project, which we'll reveal as his album drops here in late 2018. <sighs> yep. <laughs> Thanks for joining Motivational us, speaking. And also back with us, he is the, I forgot the title on Rise we were just talked about, but uh, Marcus Mann, John Cena, fan extraordinaire, head of talent relations with yeah, Rise. I that's, remembered. That's the that's the, the title I made up. That's a t- <laughs> Okay, I wasn't going to say that part. No, I made that up. <laughs> uh, it's, it's everything, including titles, is real in pro wrestling. Yeah. I just, uh, they're championships, sort of. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah! I thought they were straps. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Marcus, man, thank you for joining us hey, once again after a hot, hot rise wrestling. You know, I did not attend because I was I in know. Florida on on uh, on assignment. Uh, legitimately for business, brother. Uh, vacation? Not really. No, <laughs> it was legitimately out on business. I swear, I swear. Not just because I came up, came back. With this sweet Hulk Hogan mug from the Hogan Beach Shop, yeah. I, did, I I stood on a beach. I did not go swimming. Uh, but anyways, uh, that was not the work stuff. But no, but Bryce had a hell of a weekend from the sounds of it. We did, we did. It was um uh, we, I think that was the fourth straight show of growing attendance. Growing attendance. You're yeah. about to grow out of that damn building. That's the goal. <laughs> I keep telling I keep telling Brandon that I go. My goal is that we have to find a new venue, and he's like, well, "Where are we going to find another venue?" I okay, like, we got to. Well, we gotta, I, we're going to sell. You out. create the problem, yep. and you have enough people to solve the problem. I, I got to say, I'm super proud of all the guys there because uh, one, Brandon does a lot of great, great advertising down in the area through uh, downtown Connellsville and uh, putting up signs and all of that. But like our social media presence has been awesome because like that locker room is just pushing everything we do. Um, I can't keep up with our social media like alerts. Like I have to turn them off on my phone because of so many shares and likes. And that might be so. partly because of Missy's uh, work as social media. No, so hey, producer no, Missy awesome. who what? keeps this show cracking and also the social media accounts, including make sure Rise gets the f out there along with our <laughs> other friends, IndieWrestlingU.us. <laughs> what? Um, but did you have something to say? No, no. no she's no, out there I, hardcore social mediaing for us. I do have a question. Yes, you do have a question. As yes. far as because of where the Rise shows take place at the, the cinema there, are there larger auditoriums in there? I'm sorry. I, was uh, a, I, I, I got lost. In the oh, I'm sorry. Well, I guess, I, yeah. That's no, no, a technical sorry. question there. 
Yeah, I didn't know if in the building if there was any larger auditoriums they could um, move into. Yeah, I think the the theater next to ours is bigger, mm-hmm. but that's more expensive. And then you don't want too big. <laughs> but yeah. if you have enough people, people to solve, solve the, the problem, problem, yeah, no, yeah. people people solve the problem. And um, you keep selling so many uh, copies over at IndieWrestling.us and uh, everything like that. Uh, oh, but got, no, there's, uh, there's a little bit of clips up there highlights. for you guys. Some highlights. Uh, yeah, you can just see released crowd. on digital download and video on demand over at IndieWrestling.us. Doing a, a three-way. I know the last two matches with Jack Pollock and uh, Lee Moriarty were amazing. And, of yeah. course, uh, Lewis the Nerd. I'm not making Lu- that up. Lewis coming into his own, my friend. Oh, yeah? Yeah. If you guys watch this back, like... Um, Lewis has been one of those guys that uh, a lot of people have undersold because he's just like, they're like, oh, he's a comedy character and he's, yeah. um, you know, he's a nerd character. But uh, the story these guys told of the two guys that um, have uh, almost killed each other trying to find out who's better. And then this guy who they don't think belongs. And then by the end of the match, like Lewis belongs. He came into his own. That's awesome. His first ever main event he's ever wrestled. That's great. Yeah. And uh, he did, and he didn't. He wasn't the one to lose either. No. So mm. no. He's, he's not the guy you throw out there to take the pin. You no. know, it, it, it's awesome. It's awesome <laughs> to see. Uh, you know, uh, but anyways, uh, we'll be talking a lot of ro- wrestling with you here yes. tonight. Of course, please check out everything going on. Uh, you can, uh, of course, thanks to our our, our friend uh, basicsickness.com for our intro music. We've been playing for a good long time. We don't give him enough shout outs uh, for that, and we, we, we since he lets me. I contribute his music to a lot of the projects we do around here, maybe some commercials too. You can also check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Hit us up at that email address. Good times. Good times at SorgatronMedia.com. 412-206-WMS0 is the hotline at Mayhem Show on the Twitter, Facebook, Wrestling Mayhem Show. And, of course, the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group is uh, where a lot of conversation and all the inside jokes come from. <laughs> you can get in on them too. Um, and also kids opening pop toys that's that was a lot of, that was a lot of fun this week too uh it, it's like the puppy videos of the mayhem show uh group is that okay uh itunes please uh comments are welcome over there uh you can subscribe to us on itunes Stitcher, Spreaker, iheart radio google play music as well as uh, uh wrestling mayhem show on the video versions youtube and facebook page please like share any of those uh attach anybody that you think is a pro wrestling fan and would like our brand of chatting about professional wrestling as if we're well, at least fans of it have been around for a little bit. Uh, also, you can support the show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. You guys are literally helping keep the lights on here in Sorgatron Media Studios. Uh, thanks to our friends at the fan of the level, fan of the show, $1 level, Bo Diggity! Woo! Uh, Bobby F. J. Town. Ed Burke and oh, 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 uh, Tina Keys and the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment and our friends at the Pocky Club five dollar level. Where what do we talk about? We talk. We had like the longest and probably funniest gold leading into this. Uh, uh, mostly talking about Kid Rock, I remember, mm-hmm. um, and then, and seating arrangements for Rise Wrestling. Yeah, <laughs> part of it. Yeah, a little bit of inside indie wrestling baseball, right? A, little, a bit. Uh, those guys include our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling and Christopher Bishop and at the $10 pizza club level, our buddy Billy Johnson, who contributes things like, uh, well, we've got Emma hanging out there behind Rob. Uh, oh, we were off shot, but it's, it's back there. It's back there hanging out. There it is. Uh, <laughs> but it's also populated other promotion, other things that we've streamed from the network. Hey there, Scarehouse. Is this just like your Lance Storm corner back here now? What, why is it my Lance Storm corner? Because you got Team Storm and Emma back here. I didn't, is she a Team Storm graduate? She was, yeah. No she's way. a Lance Storm girl. Completely by, or Billy did that on purpose. Yeah. I was going to say, are you just building a Lance Storm corner over here? This is our ploy to get Lance Storm <laughs> on the show. Was Baby Groot a Lance as, Storm as guy? I also? don't believe that Black Panther trained with. No, he did not. No, no. I don't know. But if I see Lance at Landstorm pull a Wakanda <laughs> Forever sign on the social media, I'm going to fucking mark out. Uh, but thank you so much. Patreon.com uh, slash Wrestling Man- Mayhem Show uh, if you would like to support us there as well. <laughs> there is a new Pizza Club member? What? Is it? Did I miss this? It must have just come in. Did, is Mad Mike a member of the Pizza Club? You just dropped 10 bucks? you're on the okay uh i'll take a 10 bucks uh but anyways 
Uh, he's getting in for that Patreon in the bank, and that is one thing here in the next month if you are a Patreon supporter. And I think it has been determined that maybe if you're a higher-end Patreon member, you may get a little more stroke in that. We'll ask uh, Matt Carlins for the rules here later today. Um, but uh, uh, you can support the show there. Thank you so much, guys, for, for doing that. Um, and so... There's a lot of wrestling happening this week. Of course, a lot of uh, kind of the directions that are starting to form for WrestleMania, finally. A few of the matches are set thanks to uh, Fastlane and just Ronda Rousey putting COOs through tables. Uh, but we need to start just because we do have them on the show. So, Marcus Mann, mm -hmm. this is your time to talk about John Cena and mm -hmm. his um, interesting path over the last month. Oh, yeah. Now, just remember, Marcus Mann is a avid avid john cena fan yeah i don't i don't understand why anyone isn't do, just, do just, you feel like this is a problem for you no um first of all i want to say i did watch his promo on raw it was pretty much the only thing i watched on Raw. <laughs> um so he's completely prepared for this show it was uh that was a that was a hell of a promo i mean the whole crowd was there with him the entire way mm -hmm. it was a hell of a promo he nailed it mm. nailed it if you're not interested in John Cena's story right now, I like you don't love wrestling in that way. He's they have done a phenomenal job. Like it's been like baked in what he's doing because I mean everyone kind of knows where they were going, but mm -hmm. he's continued to like make it interesting the entire I way. I think I think like us that spend way too much time around yeah. wrestling and maybe have done a podcast for twelve years, maybe know where they're going. Yeah. But I know I, general fans know we're like, there were a lot of twists and turns along the way. And I think if you're mm -hmm. like, well, don't cheat, John Cena can probably witness and be the new champion of or the Elimination Chamber. He's done it before, right? Yeah. They've been pushing him being the 17th tie breaking champion ever for two months, for a month, two yeah. months now. His his two promos, the the first one of when he put himself over to SmackDown to try to get the fast lane was really good. And then the one he did on Monday was really phenomenal as well. Um, he, John Cena is one of the few guys in professional wrestling. I would say like him, Jericho is very, very good at it. Um, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anyone else off the top of my head. No, probably those two. They can walk out and do what they want with the crowd by the end of the promo. So like people, when John Cena walks out, everyone's booing him because they're like, ah, John Cena sucks and all that stuff. But by the end, like everyone in the arena is cheering for what John Cena is saying mm -hmm. <laughs> because he can just turn it the way he f knows that he knows how to turn it to make you cheer or to make you not cheer or to get what he wants out of you. Um, he's so brilliant. Um, I still say this to this day. John Cena broke Raw. Like how they format Raw became different because of John Cena. Like, in the, like when you watch Raw now, it usually starts with those long 15-minute opening segments. Yeah. Um, that's because they had John Cena. Because he could go out there and do a 15-minute segment, no problem. And then you start seeing, like, when they would give the title to Roman or even Seth Rollins, and they come out, and it's like, boy, this 15-minute segment isn't very good. It's because John Cena could control that segment for 15 minutes, no problems. And so, like, he changed how Raw is formatted, and when he's done, they're going to have to change how Raw is formatted again. Because not many people can just walk out for 15 minutes and captivate you in a promo. Certainly Roman Reigns can't. Well, I was going to say, too, as far as like oh him coming out and doing that 15 minutes, um, what I like is with Cena now, they can put him anywhere on this show yeah. to do that 15 minutes. Like yeah. when he was doing the, what was it, three years ago with the U.S. title? Yeah. Like it became interesting just knowing it's like, oh, this is a good like top of the second hour kind of mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. And you don't know who he's going to be fighting, but it's going to be interesting because they had yeah. him coming out with different... And, and he's a guy that could do that, where they'd put him in with guys yeah. with different styles. And it became interesting because, oh you know, yeah, how is he going to adapt, you know, and that's, from a performance And that's the brilliance of, that's the brilliance of, like, just John in general. But, mm -hmm. like, when I pointed out, like, watch Roman Reigns try to do those 15-minute segments. Mm -hmm. he, he can't. And that's nothing against Roman. He's not as good on the mic as John Cena. He can't control the crowd for 15 minutes. Um, but I will say this, there are very, very few people outside of the Miz can do it. Um, Joe. Yeah. There's very, very few guys that can captivate you for that long. That's a really long time to try and captivate an entire audience and twist and turn them and make things interesting. Um, Stephanie can, I mean, Stephanie's great. She's one of the best promo people on TV. Um, but 
when you watch Roman do it, or even when Rollins was doing like the uh, authority stuff, and it was like, ah, eh, like it's just not there. They never thought like, oh, we have to reformat Raw again. Like we have to start with opening matches because these guys can't do it. Because you had seen what, it do what, it for, what, what, for what like a, a decade. What a problem, you know? Man, we gotta go back to the wrestling. Yeah, yeah. you know, you know. God, let's <laughs> just throw a match out there already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, exactly. Like John did it for a decade. Like mm. the format of Raw is now like a, a decade old of this guy doing that job. Yeah, by he's the, so good. By the way, I want to give a shout out to Edric Everhart, who's uh, uh, stated that he's uh, he's going to listen to Mark Man talk about John Cena while he showers. Think about that. Also, John and Cena is the is the greatest of all time. Uh, Edric and I love John. We we talk about Cena a lot. Um, I don't like I don't get the hatred of Cena. By I, thought, people. I thought they were gl- glossing over the shower part. Oh yeah, that's just that's just that's just <laughs> that's, Eddie. It, that's just Eddie. That's pro wrestling. That's just Eddie. Okay. <laughs> um, like I don't get the hate for John Cena. I I honestly don't. And I thought like I thought it was all over after the U.S. title stuff. I, I think he kind of grew into it more than just you know. It's like, it okay, become, maybe he was a little more intolerable has it at the beginning. A current angle, you suck chant at this point. I, isn't it we I, do is it we do it just because that's what we're used to doing for John Cena. That's the thing he reacts to. That's the yeah. thing that we all can mm-hmm. chant at him. And, and it doesn't shake him any, whereas like no. you see guys no. like Roman that are still like Yeah, like yeah. you said, they're 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 trying to do what they have to do first and yeah. then deal with mm-hmm. th- with that. No, you nothing know? shakes John Cena. I preferred him in that US title spot than when the open ch- the open challenge part, right? Yeah, yeah. then when he was chasing the whichever universal yeah, yeah. WWE championship because we've seen him in that top spot over and over mm-hmm. and over mm-hmm. again. And when they were doing the open challenge, like it was basically like kind of like the Royal rumble where you don't know who's going to come out, you know? So mm-hmm. it, it was more fun or it's um, something that? to look forward to. Yeah. 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 Well, exactly. he, it's a, I think that was some of the best he's ever done. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's, Mad Mike's actually in the chat room, and he's mentioning it's it's hatred for how he's booked, not necessarily his matches. Yeah, and I mean, I get that to a certain extent. The large Cena wins kind of syndrome, I, yeah. I, I think, is, is although, what people are getting at. Although it's kind of funny, though, too, that, like, speaking of that, like, you know, with Mania coming up, he's almost kind of become... In a way, like uh, like say Undertaker, he'd come out. There'd be an Undertaker match. Yeah. Didn't matter if it was for a championship. Didn't matter to where that alone was enough to you know you could stick it anywhere in the show. A yeah. Cena where, match, whereas Cena is... hasn't been in the main event Mania for well, well, several years. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, like I think triple... him and him and The Rock was the last one. Yeah, yeah. That was like five years, maybe uh, five years ago. Twenty nine. Yeah, yeah. So, but then you've had like him versus Rusev, him versus Bray. You yeah. know the the yeah. mixed tag last year yeah. to where he, he's coming out and doing his thing but it's not like oh god he's going for the title again you know here's my thought on it and i was actually kind of happy when they started pushing this john cena wrestlemania with undertaker because i've loved the undertaker ever since i was a little kid like i watched the undertaker with my grandmother and it was great um to see him retire after brock and after roman reigns was not how i wanted to see him retire John Cena is one of those guys that can go in and make it an amazing freaking match to yeah. send him off yeah. to his happy little ever after yeah. wrestling this, career. Like if this is it for Taker, which you still never know, which is a conversation I feel like we've been having for five years. Yeah. And if also this, it, yeah. many of those endings, I think back to the uh, final of Triple H and him and Sean. Yeah. And there was a send off at the end. Yeah. That mm-hmm. could have been, that could have been a There's great a lot of them. ending. Yeah. So, like, even if, 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 if it is over, this one feels like it would wrap up more like um, Steve Austin and Rock at 19, which I think is one of the best, like, kind of final match send-off type of things I've ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. I actually prefer WrestleMania 19, Austin Rock versus any Austin Rock match they've ever plus, had. It's my favorite one they've ever had. Plus, with the you know, Austin Rock, they had, like, history that went back years yeah, yeah. so it was like oh of course if you know even if rock wasn't even around all the time anymore like he was pretty much done as a full-timer yeah, yeah but yeah. it's like oh if anybody's going to be austin's last match whether you knew it was going to be his last match or not like that's why it's perfectly acceptable as being they his, were the you know, his, they were the neck, neck guy yeah. Right? yeah tina's mentioning in here also that um a couple of different things cena went on with regard to his thing last night that he brought michelle mccool into that conversation so Mm -hmm. he went to the personal route of things as well and the other thing is you can tell placement of cena to 
especially during football season. So WWE mm-hmm. is aware that he's a guy that's going to be drawing oh, God, attention yeah. and that he can he can do that. I think it, John is like, I want to say still two behind Reigns as far as like Google hits, like Google searches. Really? Yeah, as far as like names. I'm of, surprised Reigns is beating him. Yeah, actually. So. I, Okay. Not everybody knows oh, Reigns. Yeah, everybody's trying yeah, to figure yeah. out who Roman Reigns is. Yeah. That's yeah, the only yeah, reason. Yeah, I think. I think John is two behind Reigns. I think Reigns is still number one as far as like unique Google searches. Because he hasn't been a crossover hit. Yeah, you know, as far so, as Reigns. I mean, as far yeah. as you know, he's not popping like, up on TV uh, shows or in movies. And that's the thing. It's like Nickelodeon. Yeah, his choice of John's doing that type of stuff. He's hosted the ESPYS. He hosts the Today Show every like couple weeks. So, random side note: the uh, uh, New Day at Slime the other night was one of my favorite random ass segments. Uh, so um, out there. the and I think that like I understand that people sometimes don't like the booking of John Cena of like oh he's on top and this or that but like the guy was outselling everyone in merchandise yep. he was the highest rated guy um, he was pay-per-views were selling more when he was on top mm-hmm. he's unique in Google searches he's unique in uh, social media his social media following is gigantic compared to any other wrestler and you go like what are they supposed to do it, there was a people want to see him hulk hogan won for like five years guys yeah well that's yeah i mean it was <laughs> two to three pay-per-views a month but you know I mean, <laughs> or a year i'm sorry but yeah. uh but 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 still like like yeah. i mean i seen it just did it longer and that's the thing is like longer and week to week and more yes. oh, it's a different era it's more that. prolific yeah and he's, yeah Here's another question or comment from the chat room that I think is interesting, and I kind of want to see what your thoughts are on this, okay. uh, Marcus. Alex Miller's talking. He thinks Jericho is better than Cena, and I'm assuming that's with regard to the promo content, maybe just as a wrestler in general. Ooh. What What are your thoughts on that? Like, so, like Jericho is like a personal like icon of mine. Like, so that's so there's like that level of it. Um, but here's what I will say about that. Uh, if you ask Chris Jericho, Chris Jericho will tell you that John Cena is better than Chris Jericho. Um, it's, it, it defines of what you think is better. If we're talking might skills, Jericho Jericho's better than Cena on on as a microphone guy. If you're talking about wrestling in the ring, man, John Cena is way better than people think he is. John Cena yeah. is a really really good wrestler. This concept that John Cena can't wrestle is crazy to me. And it, it's I mean, insane. It's a different level of thing. And, and Jericho, I think, is. But if we're talking uh, real quick, if we're talking about like how wrestlers view it, of like who's the best is the guy who makes the most money. It's John Cena. I, I like was, John Cena made the most money. It's that's how it works. And I was just gonna say with Jericho, and again, it's like nothing against Cena, and it's not entirely up to him. But Cena's kind of been locked into the same character for mm-hmm. years and years and years. Whereas like Jericho, you know, comes and yeah. goes and flips. He's not, got more creative freedom in that type of way to where it's he can he can do more with different characters. Yeah. And and know? and in the matches, Jericho's had the ability to wrestle different styles mm-hmm. in different ways because of how he changed his character. Um, Plus, he can be the little guy, and he can be the bigger guy, and you know, it's yeah. like there's more of a, you know, he's he's more of a he has more variety, kind of straight down the middle. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's like John is one of those guys that like, are you sure? It, it, like he's playing the same song, but that song is really good. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like yeah. Is does the like? Uh, it's almost like uh, I'll use a, like maybe it's like Dave Matthews. Where like, man, that whole album sounds the same, but man, this album's really good. Ah, uh, you lost me. <laughs> Before these crowded streets is a good album. Uh, John Cena is like, but Kid, I get, I get John Cena is like at. Kid Rock. I get what you're no. listen to it oh, over no, and over. We're not over. getting there. We're no, not no, getting no, there in the no, Kid no, Rock. Sorry, no. From the chat room. Sorry. From the chat room, Jake Garrett is in there hanging out. Uh, he says the fans started turning on yeah. Hogan's run during his first title run as well. Yeah. Uh, That's and again. I, I mean, I wasn't. I mean, I was watching yeah. on TV, but I wasn't there that to happened. witness. That happens I was with also those big runs. seven. Yeah. Uh, so my perception's a little different. But like, and the other thing is, you got to talk about is um, Hogan's run on top of WWF um, is fairly long. Like he had a decent sized run. And preceding uh, ten years before that, we had what like a six year run of yeah. Bruno San Martino. So this is uh, this is if, if how you, like things he had ran. Eight, I mean, this is this, this, this yeah. is different era. So Hogan had a good, I mean, good run on top. Um, I think. I mean, what do you, I mean? How long is Hogan's run on top? When does it end? Is kind of debatable because he goes to WCW and kind of has a run on top. But like 
Hogan has a good run on WWF on top. But then you go from Hogan and like nobody's run on top from Hogan to Cena was longer than like three or four years. Like Austin's run wasn't that long because of injuries. Rock's run really wasn't that long because he went off to Hollywood. And it was kind of at the same time. Too. Yeah. Shawn Michaels run shorter because of injuries. Brett's run shorter because he went to WCW and he got a little older. So like, you look at these guys, you're like three, four years here, three, four years here. Triple H kind of had that like three year period where he was really on top, like in the early 2000s. And then it's just been like Cena since. But, like he's been the guy since. And this is kind of unprecedented for people. Plus when you said like as far as other guys run runs on top, like it's one thing to be like, oh, if they're looking for the next Hogan, you know, or whatever. Yeah. Whereas or or like, oh, looking for the next Bruno, whatever it was. But um, that's also kind of harder to do when that guy that you're trying to find the next version of is still out there. Yeah. You know, so when he was off still being Hulk Hogan in well, WCW. And they were trying know. to find the next Hogan when Hogan left. And they yeah. were like, is it is it Luger? No, it's not Luger. Well, is it Brett? Well, it wasn't really Brett. Brett was kind of, he wasn't Hogan, but he was, I mean, he was big, trust me, especially overseas. And then like, is it Sean? Is it, is it Kevin Nash? Is it Steve Austin? Mm-hmm. Steve Austin was big, but he was never Hogan. And the run was short. And then Rock. Rock was kind of the next Hogan. But then Hollywood snatched him up. And then Rock wasn't around anymore. Um, because and then it was like Rock a, almost did what Hogan wanted yeah, to do. Yeah. You know, like whereas, he actually achieved it. Whereas Hogan <laughs> might have left the business if he had the kind of success that Rock had. Uh, from the chat, uh, Mike's saying that uh, Cena's uh, run has lasted so long because they haven't really tried to put anyone ahead of him. And, and I think, uh, see, I, dis- uh, I 100% they, disagree I think they with that. they tried a lot of people. Yeah. I 100% disagree with that one. It is not WWE's responsibility to put someone in that position. It is 100% the the responsibility of the guys in the locker room to take that position. And if you can't take John Cena's spot, then it's John Cena's spot. And Roman Reigns has tried, and Roman Reigns isn't doing it. And he hasn't gone away that they need to. No. He still so... gets better ratings. He still does everything. Like, it is it is 100% up to the guys in the locker room. And that's when like, people are like, oh, they should uh, push Dolph Ziggler. Well, that's up to Dolph Ziggler to make pe- make it uh, important enough for them to push him. Yeah. You know, they give him the opportunities and, but it's up to the guys and they'll tell you that. No, like it's, that's up to the, the guys to and take And I that. will counter that. It's also, um, I, I, I think I've stated this several times on here. It's also more than what you see in the ring. Yeah. It's how things oh, operate Jesus. backstage. It's personalities. It's no it's one does more than seen within the system. All the things they do, they talk about the Miz, the Miz. Wow. Yeah. Complains about not getting his spot. The Miz has a great spot on the show. Yes. A regular spot on the show. As even the guy that doesn't think he's getting his spot. I well, know. And that's the thing. But, yeah. but he's yeah. so yeah. good yeah. at yeah. that. The Miz uh-huh. is the only other guy that I can think of, that I know of at least, that works just as hard as Cena for the company. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, the Miz is a guy that, like, if you watch any of those documentaries, Miz's face is in them. Yeah. He's doing stuff on documentaries. He's doing YouTube stuff. He does uh, uh, photo shoots. He does interviews. Yeah. Appearances. Say, yeah, like all the other media stuff, too. You he know, does all like, of that. He volunteers yeah. all of his time to but do he, all of and that. And he's a guy, but he also came from that real world side. Mm-hmm. He understands the media side of it, he, the importance of it, and the working in the system, and, and sees that path for him to become... I mean, in, in any job, mm-hmm. what you do is make yourself invaluable to the con- company. Yes. To secure your spot there. And not that, you know, they'll say, hey, anybody can leave WWE and, and WWE will carry on. But that's a big hole if a Miz left, if a John Cena yeah. left at that point. And, and the, like the, uh, the other guy I know of and, um, is uh, who does a lot is Titus O'Neil. Titus actually does a lot of that stuff. And in that, that is why too. he is still employed. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the only reason he's still he employed. does a it ton is. of that it stuff. That, that and he's seven feet tall. And he can yeah. helps, and it he's helps. not bad. Like especially with the you know the, the Titus Worldwide thing they've yeah. got going, he's no, no, a good no. he can, on, he's a good mouthpiece. Rob, I don't think they're doing do that it. anymore. For you gotta do it. I don't. I, no. I don't know. I, I think they dropped that. Well, I mean, just I mean, the last couple now. weeks, maybe, but yeah, yeah. I, I feel like it's still kind of floating out there. If you watch, I did notice that Apollo Apollo lost his last name. Yep, he did. Yeah, yeah, that was random. And, was and like I it. and I do like Dana Brooke as Alexandra York. I actually read why. I, <laughs> yeah, that's very fun. Yeah. Do you do you read why Apollo lost his last name? No, because of the school shooting in Parkland. The kid's last name was Cruz. No, so they're like, we're just going to cut the Cruz part of Apollo Cruz. And I was like, eh, I get it. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Everyone loses a name. Everyone loses a name in WWE. You yeah. you eventually whittle down to one name. Elias, Cesaro. Elias, yeah. 
Uh, Seamus was, I think he, didn't he have the last name? Briefly. Big E was Big E Langston. He what, lost Seamus to Langston. was like Seamus O'Han- oh, O'Shanahan something, or something, something like that. He started and, um, like O'Shaughnessy or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah like, like something very Seamus-y. They all, like, uh, you, you drop, you lose your last name or your first name or you just become Big E, a letter. Uh, <laughs> Triple, and you, Triple H. Or you, um, <laughs> kind of average J. And you won't be yeah. a junior. You always lose the junior. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, Ray Ray. Because there were no others before you. No, no, no. You're the one. That... <laughs> Did you ever hear Jericho's theory on that? Hmm. Uh, that Vince won't put juniors on anyone's name. Because he's a junior? Because he's a junior. And he thinks it's a disrespectful thing. I could understand. Wait, think about that. That's a guy that lived in his father's shadow, shadow. in the same business. Mm-hmm. I mean. And he was Vince McMahon Jr. I'm sure he got so called no Jr. One, all the time. So too. he cuts all the juniors from I everyone's would love, name. And it, one, one last thing. And we, we have to get to a break. But. I would love a psychologist to just look at WWE <laughs> yeah. and boil everything down to say, which part of Vince McMahon's fucked up psyche does this come from? <laughs> right? Yeah. Because I feel like like a look at WWE through the ages is a look inside of Vince's head. Yeah. Because it is the personification of his ideals. Mm-hmm. His emotions, mm-hmm. his maybe mental state at some points. So which part which part of his brain is Snitsky coming from? <laughs> <laughs> I think the most yeah, prevalent yeah. sometimes. Uh, but <laughs> and circle back to this because we'll finish the off the segment not with his this. Fault. I <laughs> honestly feel that one of the reasons Cena has gotten the push to, that he has is because John Cena represents what Vince sees himself as. As this big American hero who never gives up, he fights everything, and he never stays down, and he'll fight anyone at any time. And he sees that in himself and in that character, and that's why John Cena has gotten so much more because of it. Absolutely. Good point on that. Thank you, Marcus Mann, for joining us. Oh, Marcus. I'm done. Oh, get out of here, guys. All right. We, well, no, no, no. That was just a segue. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. Just, okay. No, stay, stay right there. Okay. Stay right there. Because we're going to talk about food. Okay. All right. And our mm. good friends supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. I know we make you guys jealous out there in the West Coast and all across the Mayhem Nation, but we've got to give a shout-out to our friends Slice on Broadway that have been supporting us for so long. Big fans of wrestling down there in the OG original location here in Beachview. Uh, now four locations, of course, if you're in town visiting the Pittsburgh Pirates because you probably like another team that happens oh, to be playing here. Oh, I, oh, I, I, oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. That's why CM Punk came. Uh, oh, Carnegie oh. East End as well. Our good friends. Uh, slice on Broadway. Uh, even if the pe- pirates aren't doing good, at least the pizza is great. Uh, Man, the season hasn't even started yet. Has I, <laughs> I don't know. I keep getting the messages on my Google alerts, and I'm like, why do I even? But I think we um, can assume they're, 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 they're not going to be great. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't sound good. I, they're like <laughs> petitioning. I, I don't know. This is about pizza, okay? And this is the best damn pizza. Feeding our, our guests and our co-hosts here for a good long time. Uh, that are good enough to come out and uh, uh, chat wrestling or technology or whatever we're doing here this evening. And um, sometimes we do other things. It's not that I forgot what we do on Tuesday nights. Sometimes. Um, but anyways, uh, thanks to our friends, SliceOnBroadway.com. There's more wrestling connections there than you think. Hell, there might be a Rise connection. I'm just going to leave that out there. You don't know that Like pizza dough? No, 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 Rise? no, no. no. Do the dough rises? I'll tell rises. you guys on the break. Uh, but anyways. With a Y? It, it rises? <laughs> rises? No, no, no. Yeah, with a Y. Oh, Rise with a Y. I got to be very clear about that. Rise Wrestling with a Y. Yes, and Rise Wrestling Not with the a rise. Y supports Rise Wrestling with an I as well. Okay. We okay. do support them, and we. I actually love what they're doing. Oh, but, absolutely. But, it, it's, um, it's the, it's the they greatest. Na- they named the- their company like. I th- I'm not going to joke you like a month before ours. And no we didn't way. Even realize. Yeah, we didn't even realize. <laughs> and we were like, ah, what you, you know, you know, it's not the first it. company. It's like, they're not going to be around here. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> who's going to yeah. confuse the two? Yeah, who's going to? Yeah. Somebody <laughs> asked me. So I was at I was at the ICP show last week. And I I'm sorry. In, I, hey, <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't for the Juggalos, uh-huh. this show wouldn't exist, uh-huh. sir. If it wasn't for the Juggalos, Kid Rock wouldn't exist. Or Vampiro. No, no, no. Don't blame 
Don't blame the clowns for that one. Okay? How about how about getting ICP into the WWE Hall of Fame? You know, they came, right? they, they came out with the oddities that one time, and they yeah. fell off of Mike Awesome's bus. That was <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's oh, pretty funny. and they yeah. are part of the WWE. That is a Network. hell of a real. Exactly. That is a real exactly. right there. So can Listen, get, Vampiro can uh, in, uh, induct them. Yeah. There was, hey, hey. First of all, Maybe first of all, because I gotta go back to the reason I brought them up. <laughs> or Hold on Silva. a second. Hold yeah. on a second. By the way, by the way, back to the ad. Uh, Alex Carr says, "Don't kick the doors down. Super kick your former best friend through it." No, not that. No, 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 no. Hashtag, Hashtag pizza shop window. Um. Anyways, by the way, we gotta we need to start st- taking like posed pictures with. There's an actual barber shop window next to the studio. So I'm just saying, if you, sure. need, if you need some betrayal promos for whatever roasting promotion you may be running, there's a good spot over here. And I don't know. Oh, wait. Actually, I think our friends at Slice on Broadway might open. Uh, but anyways, uh, mm. don't kick that, that window down either. Um, but anyways, um, what was the other point? Oh, the clowns. Uh, I was talking <laughs> to somebody, and they asked me if I was going to the Rise show coming up. And mm. I thought it meant the show from this past Saturday. I'm like, mm-hmm. no, nah, man, I'm out of town at work, but I'm going to have a crew down there. I was like, oh, da 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 da. I'm just like, oh, you mean the lady show? No. Okay. Um, and also, Paige was there at the sh- at the ICP at show. At the ICP show, she, her boyfriend is the bassist, I believe, for Attila, who is mm-hmm. uh, co-headlining with uh, ICP on the all side all of those show. words you just said make sense, don't they? No. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I know. She was in, and mm-hmm. she's not on the house show. So last week, um, she went on tour with them and was hanging out. And uh, was uh, a mere five feet away from me. Uh, so I she did, seems like a good time. It, it, she seems like she's a lot of fun. If like, you would have said she was dating she, the drummer, that might be unbelievable. But <laughs> it just, yeah. The bassist? Yeah, oh, the yeah. bass player. Bassist, yeah. Not yeah. the lead singer. All the ends. But definitely. <laughs> no. And also, if you're just like, like I'm looking around. They have, and I'm they just have like, less equipment you have to haul for. Because yeah. there was the, the, oh, do I say hi? Do I be that guy? And I'm just like. No, no, because one, I don't want to. I don't want to blow up her spot and have people realize who she is, and she gets fucking hounded by, by, by juggalos. Um, Spoiler alert: she probably did anyway. I, I, <laughs> I didn't see. I didn't. It, was, it wasn't your fault, though. They were distracted, thankfully, by whatever horrible rapper was on stage. But anyways. You're really selling me on this ICP. Yeah, oh, no, no, ICP is <laughs> great. Like a hell of a show. ICP is great. I could do out with do without the 20 openers on their shows mm-hmm. because half of them want to be ICP and they're not even a quarter that. Far. So how long is their set? Because that always worries me when I go to a show and there's like 13 opening bands. Oh my god! What? But it, it, it was um, 15 minutes too long for oh. everyone except for one called Sadler. That was good. We're getting off topic again. Okay. The point All is. Right. Fuck! I forget my point. If we would, if clowns, we, if it wasn't for ICP, there would be no John Cena. No, no, yeah, no. That there wasn't there would the be point. no Doctor of Thugonomics. There was, there was a whole point in this. And Marcus wouldn't it have was, gotten his yeah. doctorate in thug- Thugonomics. No, no I, only got, I only have my master's. Yeah. I don't even know what's going on anymore. Um, <laughs> Just was, kick down the door. ICP was a fun show. So I, I had a good time. I almost met Paige, but I was a, I was a nice person and left her alone. <laughs> That's all I got. Page two. All right. No uh, fast lane was this past weekend. Page also. <laughs> Page the second. Uh, <laughs> Junior. Oh boy. Um. I don't. I don't know. Fast lane happened this weekend, guys. Uh. There was a five way match. There was a lot. A lot. A lot happening. Um. How are you guys feeling about uh, going into WrestleMania after this? Do you, are you? Are you excited? I. I feel like I am the happiest with the WrestleMania that's taken shape that I've been in a while. I like that there's a good, you know, again, talking about, you know, the kind of matches you expect. I like that there is a good, there are like a good three or four matches that could be like top matches. You you know, I mean, I think that maybe two realistically might main event, you know, but, but there is a good. I want to break this down. I want to break this down. First of all. Yes. (coughs) I have two theories about WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. Let me, don't, don't let me forget about the second one uh, to bring it up. The first one is there is no main event of WrestleMania mm-hmm. because when you have the things they line up, mm-hmm. you just have four or five hours of 
crazy match, crazy match, crazy match, crazy match. This is the one with Brock Lesnar. This is the one with Ronda Rousey. This is the one for this championship. That's a dream match for the people that maybe watched Wrestle Kingdom a couple years ago. This mm-hmm. is the one that, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Oscar versus Charlotte feels like it could be a pretty damn good match and show stealer of the night. Mm-hmm. It is the um, uh, super fun time variety show of WWE amassing in one giant uh, stadium. Mm-hmm. Uh, Triple H talks about WWE being a variety show. This is the most variety of variety wrestling show i think there is you know and and i don't think you can say other than being the last match because the last match hardly ever holds up to being the last match main event of wrestlemania as far as i can remember the last 10 years ish uh and i don't think they quite got the drama out of it last year that they want like i like when they go you know whether something looks like the best match or not but but then you know AJ yeah. and, and Shinsuke looks you, like it could be you, great. You, you know, also like, have a giant, as, as have... a high energy closer. But but it's but you've got like Cena and Undertaker, which might have like kind of more drama behind yeah. it, and and it may, might be harder to follow in that sense. You also yeah. have a show full of people that are on WrestleMania trying to get their moment, their memory out of WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't tell them not to outshine Brock Lesnar's match. Yeah. Right. I mean, at that point, mm-hmm. I mean, they're, they're going to go out and try to kick ass. And, um, and I think there's this level thing that happens there. Plus it's like seven hours of wrestling. And mm-hmm. I, 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 I don't know. That's a whole other situation on top of things. You guys' thoughts. Um, I think Brock Lesnar is going to have the best match. Real, I'm a uh, shocking. I'm a giant Brock Lesnar. I mean, fan. I don't think that gigantic Brock Lesnar fan. Okay, I bigger think, than John Cena fan. Uh, oh, I think John Cena is maybe the greatest wrestler ever. <laughs> but Brock Lesnar is one of my favorite wrestlers. I've how ever are you doing watched. with that shower? <laughs> but, but I love to watch Brock just beat the shit out of people. Uh, so <laughs> one of my favorite things to do when I get like really, really drunk is uh, I'll go back and I'll watch uh, SummerSlam 2002 and Where watch Suplex wow. City started, which is the greatest SummerSlam ever. It's, ro- it's, ever. it's Brock's arrival. <laughs> yeah, it's Brock Lesnar versus the Brock. SummerSlam. 2000. Check out this one. card. It is the I'm greatest SummerSlam. Oh, Rock and ever. Brock. The Rock versus the Brock. Oh <laughs> so I watched that particular match, and then I'll jump forward and watch Jeez. 2014 my of God. Lesnar versus Cena, where this, he gets suplexed. Oh to hell it was like the this, snuff film. It's it's amazing, card. dude. Summer it's a Slam? super wait, card. Wait, go through this card. It's Undertaker a super versus card. Test. Ooh. Ends up being really good. Oh, that! <laughs> oh, you're oh. me on that. I, I was trying. We'll, to, we'll come back to that. I'll come I, back. I, I just ba- American Badass Taker. I, yeah. I imagine. Okay. Yeah. Kind of the tail. Shawn end Michaels of... and Triple H in an unsanctioned street fight. Oh, yeah. That, that was a, Shawn's comeback. It's that Shawn's was... comeback match after years of retirement. Yeah, yeah. It's um, a, it's amazing. Rob Van Dam and Chris Benoit for the IC title. Ooh, really good. Wow. Uh, the Un-Americans, Lance Storm and Christian. Against Booker T and Gold Dust. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, 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 okay. Yes. All right. It's good. Sh- it's a good match. Edge and Eddie Guerrero. Yeah. What's well, not to love about yeah, that? I mean, yeah. Ric Flair and Chris Jericho. Jeez. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Okay. Um. And there was that point where Ric Flair like came back that 2002, mm-hmm. and it was like he was he was reinvigorated because he was trying to prove he wasn't yeah. a piece of shit that WCW told him he was. This was heading into um we're get, like pre uh 19. Mm-hmm. So like this is the um he might have just come back to action too because yeah, so they brought him yeah. back at Survivor Series the well right yeah, after this the was year two, before 2002 as a yeah, figurehead. Yeah. So we're heading into it's like um pre it's just so it's like right before Evolution. Mm-hmm. Like oh, they're, they're, yeah, they haven't right. dropped the Evolution stuff yet. Okay. Um I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I lost my spot. Uh uh Kurt Angle and Rey Mysterio. Yes. I mean they, they that was the opener result. too. I By think. the way, your your dark match pre-show uh for Sunday Night Heat was uh, Spike Dudley and Stephen Richards. Because <laughs> that's what and, Stephen Richards did. <laughs> and I was going to say, between Undertaker, you know, we joke at Undertaker versus Test, but yeah. speaking of WrestleMania show, or, you know, season and go-home shows, we had right here in <laughs> Pittsburgh, 13 years ago, we had No Way Out 2005, mm-hmm. which featured on a pay-per-view, Undertaker versus Luther Reigns, who <laughs> was never oh, anybody. And okay. that was a month before Mania. And... <laughs> And I think what it Taker took on was, was he might have been 
Orton at Mania, right? Yeah. Something like that. Maybe. I think so, yeah. Maybe. I think you're right. So, but yeah, we on a pay per view match yeah. <laughs> a month before Mania. Uh, Alex Cars is letting us know that uh, in the chat that SummerSlam 2000 sounds like universe mode in 2K17. It does. <laughs> it's, it's, so I, I love one, Shawn Michaels versus Triple H. That match is just like a brilliant. Like, and, really fucking mad. And they kill Sean at the end. Yeah, so it's, it's like the it's yeah, the sledgehammer yeah. to the back. So it's like, like yeah. oh, he's never coming back. You know? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. It was um, like he's coming back from a then, back injury. And, and I think doesn't he win the title in Elimination Chamber like the next month? No, it's in, or uh, Survivor, Survivor Series, Series. maybe. Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. then they go like also if you watch from that uh to WrestleMania twenty, that story between Triple H and Shawn Michaels is phenomenal. Jeez. Phenomenal. Anyway, Jeez. I'm off topic. Anyway, back maybe to Brock Lesnar. All right. Back to Brock Lesnar. Uh Brock Lesnar versus Reigns at 31 mm-hmm. is a really good match. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's actually really, really good. It was it one is. of those matches where Reigns showed up. Lesnar cared. Uh, Lesnar sometimes doesn't like, sometimes he doesn't care. And that's part of Lesnar's problem. But uh, Brock is... The Lesnar Dean, for he, instance. He didn't, yeah, but... Uh, I'm not a Dean Ambrose guy, but we'll get, that's neither here nor, here nor there. This is about Brock Lesnar. He's yes. injured. He's not... Yeah. One, I think it's going to be a hard hit. It's going to be completely different. It's going to be a hard-hitting match. Um, Lesnar, when he's on, dude, he is he he's a great seller. He can bump when he wants to. He f- like you ever see Brock Lesnar take a slingshot? That dude jumps like out of his boots. Uh, he's crazy athletic. I think I think Brock Lesnar is very underrated uh, in people's minds because like there's this weird concept in wrestling fans now. Uh, and it bothers me where they go like, oh, Brock Lesnar's not good. He doesn't do any moves. And you go like, hey, guys, moves aren't wrestling at all. Moves are like not even a part of it. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, it's emotion. It's it's, yeah. it's telling a story. It's I, getting the crowd in the I watched, palm of your hand. I watched a 14 minute match from AIW recently that was Rockstar Spud versus Marion Fontaine. And oh they God. did they did zero moves, oh and it's God. one of the most entertaining matches you will ever see in your life. Moves are not wrestling. Get off that train. Brock Lesnar doesn't do any moves, but he's awesome. He's legit. Like you think Brock Lesnar could kill a person? Yeah. Watch him punch Braun Strowman in the face. I'm not sure yeah. that he <laughs> hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what he's doing yeah, there in the, in the middle of Canada or Minnesota or wherever like the hell Sasqu- he is these Sasqu- days. He's just hunting he's homeless, homeless Lesnar- people on his property, <laughs> killing <laughs> Sasquatch. The most dangerous yeah, yeah, yeah. game to me. Brock. That's why Lesnar- you haven't found Sasquatch. He's yeah. killed yeah. them all. He's, yeah. a, he's he a rug eats, in Brock Lesnar's dining room. <laughs> he's, pro- he's protecting us from these otherworldly or interdimensional beasts <laughs> that you know. Just- Brock Lesnar. We owe a lot to Brock Lesnar. Turns out Brock Lesnar's the Highlander, didn't you know? There is only one Lesnar. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, Lesnar to me is the closest thing in 2018 that we can get to a Bruiser Brody. The closest thing that you can actually get. I'm not saying he's Bruiser Brody. Yeah, yeah. But he's the closest thing where, like, people walk in the match with Brock Lesnar right. and you go, like, well, I know wrestling, but, like, man, Brock Lesnar could kill that dude. Chat room, uh, just to catch up here. One, it looks like Edric's out of the shower. Oh, um, uh, <laughs> so, in case you were worried it about him out there. looks like he is, or did he just say I, I mean, he's, 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 unless he's, he's in the chat room in the shower, which uh, <laughs> kudos to you for your dedication to the chat room. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Well, uh, Mike, Matt Mike's saying once you punch Lesnar in the mouth, he don't care a lot more. Oh like yeah, Braun, I think it was Braun that learned that last uh, show, uh, or Rumble or wherever the hell he yeah. showed up. I'm sorry, there's <laughs> so much going on. Again, Tina mentioning how how that street fight paved the way to Elimination Chamber. Yeah, and uh, uh, there was something else in here. I'm sure. Oh man, Matt Mike says Summer SummerSlam 2002 was the biggest regret he never got tickets to. Man, Man, rewatch that show, everyone. Yeah. Where where was that anyway? I, I'm assuming New York. Assuming New York. New York. That's, 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 Madison, that's the Madison Square Garden show, I think. Hold on. The Wiki- is it? Wikipedia page. For some reason, I feel like it was Anaheim. It is Uniondale, New York, and oh, Nassau. Wow. Nassau Memorial Nassau. Coliseum. Yeah. So there you go. I mean, definitely up in there. Uh, he's, he's up in Poughkeepsie, that's New York good. area. It feels like a weird place Long to have Island. a SummerSlam. But Long they're Island, back there, know. though. It's yeah. the thing, you know, it's like, yeah, sort of, yeah, in a way, in the area. What, what did I say? Nassau. 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 Nassau com- yeah, sure. sure. Yeah, that works. Na- NASA. Theory yeah. two. NASA NASA theory com- two. Space shuttle By the way, the your theory one about there's not a main event, you go ahead and tell Phil Brooks that. <laughs> <laughs> you go ahead and tell him. Oh, who the fuck did put this? Was this one of your tweets? Somebody said. Speaking of the Miz and John know, Cena. Somebody yeah. said about CM Punk. <laughs> Probably. Was a guy that had great matches for every WrestleMania 
Uh, I did see that tweet. Like, it wasn't me. Going up, I th- actually, it was um, Eisenberg from Church yeah. of Reality that did that. Yeah. Uh, if you look at his WrestleMania matches leading up to him quitting mm-hmm. because he wasn't getting his way, mm-hmm. he had like the best shit. But he had like the best lineup of a career ever. His his first mania though was that when they were doing the full new ECW versus old ECW. Was yes. he involved in that? Yes. Where it was just a giant like eight man. Well, tag he had or come a long way from that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I mean, it's as far as a starting match. Yeah, it's not mm-hmm. like he yeah, ended. But there. I think there's other factors. Yeah. But it was just an interesting. It's a good trajectory. Yeah. Theory two. No matter what, WrestleMania will not live up to your expectations. Let me. I might have given well, that was depressing. Of They've been low before, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, but, I, mean, but I feel like in the moment, and maybe this is just the way, the way WrestleManias have been in the last few years, I think a lot of people build that up and we get the whole WrestleMania moments and everything. I think, I think, because I think back to some, some WrestleManias that I watched them, we'd be like, all right, that was, that was interesting. And you look back and like, I don't think we were as excited about Reigns and Lesnar the first time as if we look back. And, that was a good fucking match. That was it actually was. really good. It was a really good match. That night, when you're with your friends, maybe here at Sorgatron Media Studios, eating the chips and dip and the slice on Broadway pizza, and you're watching the match, and Reigns is holding a belt at the end of the night, you're not feeling too good about it. But if you look back, when we do uh, next year's WrestleMania, where are they? Are they going to New York next year? No, right? Not. New Jersey or something? But- uh, maybe when you look back retrospectively, WrestleMania, I feel in the moment, your like that WrestleMania excitement bubble and expectation bubble of thirty what, four years of history of WrestleMania. Did I got the number right? I don't yeah, know. We don't yeah, have numbers on them anymore. That, we just point at a sign. Yeah, I mean, I get where you like. You know, there's a like, lot of pressure put on it because it's but, like it's the 30 you act whatever. Yeah, every yeah, year yeah. WrestleMania. Like, you, got, you got Andre Hogan and Andre. You got you got. But where's your Sean Where's your bar? And Brett. You got Sean. Uh, Sean They're in a tag and, and match. Rick Flair. You What's have? They're in a tag match with Braun. No, it's nice. It's good for you. Oh. <laughs> As I say, where do you like? Where do you like? Are we looking for like if you ranked WrestleManias? And there's like the good ones, and then like the really bad ones. Is there like a like is is the bar set at like the median WrestleMania? And what WrestleMania is that? Like what WrestleMania is like? I, I, it's I, the average I mean, WrestleMania, I'm and sorry, this is what you can I expect. Keep thinking about bar jokes with the tag I team, I just can't stop. <laughs> I, I, I think what what also kind of you know as far as going you know like kind of the, the further you remove or you get removed from like say this year's WrestleMania, it's almost kind of like what follows it too yeah like you know like say they yeah, make some yeah. big thing like say for instance um like wrestlemania 30 that was the one where you know it was like yeah it was the daniel bryan show you know yeah, yeah. and it ended yeah. well and it was good it had its own kind of arc that because yeah, that, that it was finished that but, and then the lesnar yeah. taker moment there's just these moments you remember but, from it but then unfortunately and it's still a good show but unfortunately within like two months later you know daniel bryan was you know he yeah. ended up not really being able to do anything no and was almost done by that point, you know. So it's like it's unfortunate to to know it doesn't hurt the show. No, but but it's but but it could also have the opposite effect. Like if you had a mania that you weren't really that into, yeah. But it the directions they went coming out of that maybe painted it in a better light because yeah, it, of it, I the mean, legacy. Of also, it. think you're in the moment. Yeah, it's build, 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 build. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's not the outcome you wanted. <clears throat> uh, no. and then and then the next day is going to be. Build crowd beach ball shock shock mm-hmm. intro intro new guy NXT yeah. mm-hmm. uh Lesnar comes out in F fives and sets up for WrestleMania next fucking year with mm-hmm. John Cena right like like it, it's you don't have a moment to digest it too mm-hmm. and then again when you go back and look at a WrestleMania thirty four six months down the line or you see the packages for the next year at the live events right yeah um because you look back and you're like wow that was a lot of fun. You know, and, yeah, like and, your member berries kick in and 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 and, and, and also kind of, again, looking back at past shows, you know, speaking of like, you know, Reigns and Lesnar, it kind of helps and hurt hurts it that we've seen it before, because when it played out before, we, nobody saw the twist coming. Yeah. You know, so it yeah, created yeah, yeah. In, in a way it creates another kind of secondary I... expectation for are we going to see something screwy again or is it going to be like a straight match i love that the conversation going into this year is yeah brock doesn't respect 
anything. Like yeah. it's kind mm-hmm. of the Cena rock thing. But isn't the thing, it? Yeah. and the nice thing is that we haven't heard from like Lesnar yet on it. Yeah, and yeah. like so I'm really, I'm, this. I'm really waiting for Lesnar to come out and be like, yeah, I don't. <laughs> why? Why would I? Yeah. It's like why would I? I? Yeah. Like, like that. Pay me. <laughs> that. Uh, set up when I think it was uh SummerSlam last year, or whatever it was. Uh, uh, Lesnar and Orton going into it, and this whole thing about like Orton doing this video package about like his career and Brock Lesnar, and like you know they were on these paths and all of a sudden, and then it just cuts to Brock Lesnar. He's like, yeah, I know who Randy Orton is, yeah. <laughs> but he's not on my fucking level, yeah. and it's like. Oh shit! Like it's like it, that is Lesnar to a T. I remember which, that it was like him and sitting in the chair and like Heyman's behind him yeah. and he just like drops that bomb and Heyman's yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like just that line sticks with me so hard because this whole, it's like a minute of Randy Orton building this up like of how they were on like similar career paths and then Lesnar leaves and Lesnar just going like yeah I know who he is. <laughs> like that's as far as Lesnar considers Randy Orton. Like, yeah, I know of him. I know of him. Yeah, and that's like so. I'm waiting for Lesnar to come out with Reigns and being like, "Yeah, you're right. Uh, I don't have to come. I don't have to show up." This is the point where I do have to drop a plug to the Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube account because Matt and Mike reminds us, "Well, if only someone watched and reviewed every single WrestleMania and put the bump on YouTube." Both Matt and Mike and I have done that actually. Yeah. So go on our YouTube page. There are some some thirty. I know for me, I did it around WrestleMania thirty. He did it last year, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's uh, so so you can catch up on some thoughts on that. We didn't really. Uh, like we again did retro- you rank them i don't know i don't think we ranked them i think you got to rank Mike, them man. let me know if you did jeez oh, if you guys rank them what's what's the median what's that wrestlemania that's like right in the middle wrestlemania 2000 see that's see, i don't know <laughs> Edric said 18 and i think 18, 18 yeah, might be yeah. right in that middle Cause, too cuz i was going to say ni- t- 2000 and i just looked like yesterday it only had like Russo was gone, but it was a very Russo kind of. Yeah. Everything was a three way match or a yeah, four way yeah, match yeah. or something a to where every it, it was such a gimmicky mm-hmm. show in that sense that it's not really that representative <laughs> of a. Yeah. You not, know, but like there's whatever. Here's what I'm gonna say. Whatever the average WrestleMania is, go watch that, and then that's what you should expect. The most average WrestleMania. And then if it's better than that. All right, WrestleMania 11. Let's go. Oh yeah. no, that is one of the I mean, worst. WrestleMania and WrestleMania and now WrestleMania nine holds a fondness in my heart. It's for how freaking weird it was. It's really weird and it's not good. <laughs> yeah, it's different. It's certainly but it's different. everything. <laughs> but it's everything, and that it's interesting to look at. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was visual. Okay. I mean, it's a different. Yeah, yeah. Wait, not a lot of substance. Interesting to look at. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like a penthouse magazine. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, the toga is actually making it even closer. Say that, but yeah, <laughs> I yeah, I would say. Well, Bob Cuccioni Jr. He did, he did do the the Caligula movie, so I suppose that. And it all comes See, together, there we go. doesn't it? Well, there WrestleMania, we I'm sure, will be just fine, guys. <laughs> WrestleMania, I feel, is in some okay hands. And let's look at it. Honestly, it's a mix between UFC and and NXT five years ago anyways. So you'll be okay. Uh, But anyways, you will also be okay if you... (laughs) Wow, that's not a good segue for this piece of it. Um, is this the thing I'm replacing with the thing? This is the thing I'm replacing with the thing. Jim Ross made his debut at WrestleMania Jim Ross, 9. Jim, okay. Jim Ross Oklahoma. did. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. What a way to show up. Hey, th- <laughs> thanks, Jim. We really appreciate having you here. Put this on. Remember when he turned heel and he was like, he was like I showed up first day of work in damn toga. It was embarrassing. I'm on Drogcast Journalist. Here's, here's what I'm going to tell uh, future wrestling promotions. Stop turning commentators heel. Yep. Stop oh, it. Oh, yeah. Stop I, it. There's, Just well, stop please. it. In, not in necessarily in defense of that, but it's like, okay, from a character standpoint, I can see sometimes, you know, that. I mean, but I've seen... Michael when, Cole was a great heel. The play-by-play guy. <laughs> yeah. Leave the play-by-play no, play yeah. guy. Bobby Heenan... But yes, it's different. Bobby Heenan. But Bobby I, Heenan. But Jesse I wanna, Ventura. But I was just thinking of, there was a Lucha promotion on MTV. Do you remember that? It was like Lucha Libre uh, USA or... Oh, Mas- yeah. Okay. Whatever. Was that MTV? Mass was, Warriors? No, Mass it was... Or Mass Warriors. Yeah, it was something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It was going on probably 10, you know, 8, 9, 10 years was ago. It, was it Mucho Lucha? Or, I, oh, Are you thinking of WSX? I don't know. It was, it was after that, but it was like an actual, like, you know, Lucha Libre guys where... 
it was not fake Luca. No, Libre not those. Guys. Not the not the not the fake stuff. Lucha but, Libre but, USA Wikipedia page. But, but they had the commentators. This, is, this might be on Hulu. Yeah, but they well. but, but they had the commentators where it's like you don't know who any of them are, and one of them's just an asshole for no reason. Yeah, you know, like he's the heel <laughs> yeah. because they said he's, he's the, the heel, heel commentator. You know, so it's like it doesn't come from anything. You know, no, no, and that's what I mean. Like commentators, like if, yeah. especially color guys, if you're running uh, like. Um, Don Silas out there, like yeah. he's a heel. Mm. Let it go. But you're play by play guy. I love yeah. his new Japan stuff. Yeah. Dude, if you're running a play by play guy, like let's not like let's not turn Kevin Kelly heel. Yeah. Like that's just a bad call. <laughs> it hurts the Kevin product. Kelly is too nice to be it's always like like Adam like like uh, Adam Cole. Michael Cole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just he's I don't he's Michael Cole. He's the war journalist. Like, he, what, what was that? Yeah, undefeated, undefeated at WrestleMania. Undefeated at WrestleMania. I love <laughs> how he randomly did uh, drop that line on Lawler, like at Royal Rumble yeah. recently. So, you know, it's, it's like, okay, that's kind of fun in retrospect that we get to see that. Although, I do like uh, when we talk WrestleMania moments and we show Jerry Lawler at WrestleMania and his sweet getup. He had that awesome WrestleMania mm. entrance. We just generally forget about the fact that he is going to the ring to face <laughs> that it wasn't a good Michael match. Michael Cole uh, of all people. Michael Cole has a higher WrestleMania win percentage than Mick Foley. And there goes Larry bringing it down. Hey, you know what <laughs> makes it a little bit better? You know what what makes it fun? You know our good friends also uh, supporting the show. New sponsor here at uh, the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling. And you guys, pro wrestling is a wild and crazy art form. If you haven't been able to figure that out, and so is this podcast, by the way. Uh, but anyways, um, and Occupy Pro Wrestling is here to look at what makes it fun and great featuring articles, blogs. They had a great uh, live, uh, actually a live blog last night of uh, Fastlane. Uh, and uh, in a podcast that brings you interviews and from fellow fans, Occupy Pro Wrestling is putting the smart back in the smart mark. Hmm. And also a great supporters here of the Wrestling Mayhem show. Uh, they've been putting our stuff up. I know they've been promoting our shows as part of their podcast. And thank you so much. They even had that, that, that political mayhem show we tried out for a bit. That should be coming back soon. Uh, check it out. OccupyProWrestling.com. Power to the Smarks on Twitter as well. Thank you to them for supporting a Wrestling Mayhem show. We'll be back in a moment with the Mayhem Mania. I can't wait to see what Marcus Mann comes up as a part of this he was looking over the card and had some commentary that we will not get into right now. But we'll be right back after this. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Welcome to the State of Mayhem. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, the show where we don't talk about the insane clown posse anymore. And with me, I got a whole crew. Marcus, man. Has not been kicked off this show yet. Uh, <laughs> Give it time. <laughs> with Rise Wrestling. That's Rise with an uh, a y. y. Rise with a Y and less women. But yeah. getting more lately. Yeah, we're trying. Yeah. There's Try. a couple, couple Rise. ladies around last Try. night. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't say it like that. <laughs> Girls. Rob the cameraman. <laughs> I said ladies. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's not like they're trying to pick up women. Ladies. We had we had a very uh, I'll, I'll shout out to her because she's not watching because but why would she? Uh, we brought uh, a, a very nice uh, young lady, uh, Nikki Victory, out of Cincinnati, yes. who did a killer job for us. We hope to have her back. And Laura Loveless, friend of the Laura show. Laura Loveless, friend of the show. Uh, the returning of Honey Badger mm-hmm. uh, was on the show as well. Um, we'll try and do more. We'll try and do what we can. There you but go. We only do like seven shows, seven matches a show. So <laughs> <laughs> we're not that kind of promotion. Yeah. Uh, and also with us, we got uh, mainstream Matt. He's trying to keep it together because, again, we are on the front lines of the battleground. It's um, just sweat district. pouring down right now. Yeah, he's, special he's, election. Oh my god! This special election is just like the end of WrestleMania 31, <laughs> except. Seth Rollins is not running him to cash in at the end of the night. Nope, no, nope, no. Nope, There's nope. no Libertarian. There's no Green Party candidate. None of those guys. They're not coming in. It's just Brock and Roman. You're stuck with them, America. So here we go. Also with us, of course, Larry just off uh, just off there. He's in there. Hi. Hey, there you go. And producer Missy hanging out as well. And on the line, uh, Mad Mike for joining us from Pooh, Kipsey, New York, because it is time for Mayhem Mania. The, the who's the, who's bringing us the official of the theme of mayhem mania uh, we don't have a, not oh, yeah. kid rock 
Yeah. Not no. Kid Rock. Oh no, there's flips. There is a, there's a, there's some Michigan representatives here. Yeah. They're very sore about the uh, latest Hall of Fame inductee. But we talked mm. about that. That's why you should join us on the uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold Five Dollar Level Patreon, as well as the live stream, so you can check that out. Uh, mainstream Matt, you know what? Good thing that you brought up the uh, the Patreon subscribers mm-hmm. sword because it's a good time to remind all the Patreon folks. You know, keep making sure that you're making your payments because you don't want to miss out on Patreon in the background of Mayhem Mania coming up. No, somewhere no, down no. the line and anyone who hasn't ponied up yet mad mike um it's I gonna be time soon to throw yesterday. your dollar into the kitty so you can play too that's coming I, up yeah, in yeah. a few I've weeks my money in i've thrown yep. my money in this it's, is a yes. big time money maker this is like the girl scout cookies of sorgatron media <laughs> it's, not, it's it makes you so much cash you make it sound like i'm gonna jump in a scrooge mcduck uh, uh money pit <laughs> Out of is our that, Patreon Isn't that supporters. why we moved out of the basement? I mean, yeah. I mean that's the big idea. pile of coins that's, down there? That's the idea. Yeah, that's where I store my coins. <laughs> uh, right, I can't even do my laundry anymore. That's why I've been wearing the same it's sweater for the last where your days. number one dime is stashed? <laughs> my number one dime. Oh, God, I forgot about that. Fuck, I want to watch Star- DuckTales now. I know. Oh, Woo! boy. How was that doing? No? See, no? See, that's smart. I just have, like, the giant Batman penny. Like, I just have one giant ah, penny. Yeah. So that's, the, yeah. that's my problem. Somebody's got to clean that. <laughs> You know, mainstream Matt, bring us back around. What are we doing? <laughs> oh, no. Okay, so hey, hey, Marcus, uh, I'm Matt. Um, <laughs> this is um, this is a uh, Mayhem Mania. It's a kind of a competitive thought experiment where we are trying to create the best possible WrestleMania card um, within the bounds of the current reality. So basically, so real quick before you go, how, how many years have you guys been doing this? Is this the first the year? Fourth, fourth year. So in these three years that you've done it before this year, have you guys actually created a better card than WrestleMania? Yes. Object- Every single year. Objectively? Yes. All right. Fair enough. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Okay. I'm just checking. Did you look we at all, this But well, we never got to witness it to like, make oh, sure if it yeah. lived above our, our unexpected So this is like a computer model. Like, yeah, yeah, so we yeah. don't know if the human element. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this well, is the we one. Do have, we do have a poll as to what card is better, the Mayhem Mania card or the mm-hmm. WrestleMania card. We do. We do. Okay. That's true. Yes. All right. we, just we, checking. We've never it's actually scientific. like simulated it. So maybe we'll simulate the matches on like 2K18 this year. That'd be kind of cool. We're also not booking it. We're not booking winners and losers. We're just setting the card. Well, well, you then know, just put it on computer mode and see who wins. Why? Well, yeah, I, I believe in that too. You, you gotta let the see, talent. Just you gotta better. let the talent do the, the the thing. I mean, yeah. we just bring the talent together. I mean, it's up to them to make the magic. So I mean, <laughs> that's how it happens. Um, so I mean, I mean, the, the the deal is that okay. So I mean, even though it is kind of fantasy booking, it's kind of like reality booking also because you can't really um, you got to play by the rules of that Vince McMahon is playing by. So you can't like pull guys who are injured right now mm-hmm. and make them eligible. You can't pull like dead people and make them into a match. Okay. You got to operate under the same rules as Vince. You're Vince McMahon with zero self-control and unlimited resources. Okay. So basically um, you're Vince basically McMahon Vince McMahon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right. It's fun. Um, so um, we, we have this eight match card that we, uh, that uh, we'll be playing around with. And you will have a chance to make one change to this existing eight match card. You'll be able to swap in one wrestler for another wrestler. Or you'll be able to just kill a match entirely and create a new match with new guys. Uh, or you'll be able to just add one person or one tag team, uh, one unit, so to speak. This has been a hot debate lately over what we can add and what we can't a u- add. A unit. We have rules here. Very strict rules. Right, so Sorg? Can, so, like, for example. Yeah. Would you consider like the Freebirds a unit, or would you have to a- add each individual member of the Freebirds, or like the New Day? Yeah, um, For, I would probably ask because I guess specify, you can't add the Freebirds. Like if you were gonna no. say, you know, <laughs> I want to add, I want to add the New Day to this yeah, uh, three way yeah. match. I would be like, how many members of the New Day? Okay, and you would be like all three just, of them, just, of course, just Piggy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. Yeah, so I mean, you're on the right track. You, you, you're you're going to do fine. Okay. All I don't right. know if you'll do as good as Beast Man, but we'll see. I uh, no uh, one does as good as Beast Man. No, definitely not. Um, Sorgi. Um, oh, first of all, let's tell everyone about the one match. If a match survives three weeks without being changed in any way, it graduates. It locks into our quote unquote super card, that so that we so. can make more more room to play with matches on the other card. So far, we've graduated one match, and it is Ricochet versus Pete Dunne. Is our Dude, one graduated match yeah. so far pretty good, Dude. right? I mean, you'd like to see that match, right? Yeah, I like, I like Pete Dunne. Yeah, you're supposed to say I like Ricochet. Ricochet wrestles. Okay, no, I actually no, I actually like Ricochet. Okay, I'm just being, <laughs> I'm being, I'm being a jerk. Awesome. No, Ricochet is not bad. Okay, uh, let's go through these uh, other eight matches, Sorg, and then we'll try to figure out what the hell we're doing today. All right. Uh, first up, we've got the Honky Tonk Man and Rockabilly versus Jeff Jarrett and the Roadie. 
created by that was beast created man. by the beast man yeah. he's good uh next up we've got samoa joe versus aj styles versus adam cole created by hot wheels we have got billy k and peyton royce versus ember moon and Kyrie sane created by bobby f j town we've got oscar versus brock lesnar created by my mic mad mic that'd be me we have Elias versus The Rock, uh, created by, sorry, the monitor's out of my Larry. Larry, good job, Larry. We have got Batista versus Bro- Bobby Lashley versus Braun Strowman versus Drake Maverick, created by Krista Joseph from uh, co-executive producer for Lucha Underground. He was on last week. We've got Finn Balor versus Aleister Black, created by Bobby F. J. Town, And finally... Created by Chad the Shad, John Cena, and both Bella <laughs> Twins versus The Undertaker and Lay Cool. I, lo- I love Undertaker's face in this. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most Undertaker face. Um, Matt, I, Matt, I have a quick question before we start. Is the envelope in play this week? Yeah, the envelope's in play this week. I'll get to that in one what's, second what's here. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, I gotta explain the envelope now. Um, okay, so... <laughs> There's so much crap. Why do you keep I love adding on to this? Get more, or more complicated as this goes on. You are a I'm mad man. Break. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can't. All right. Last week, do, do you hold that up to your head, and then <laughs> if only it worked. No, well, we're really trying to hold this up. Uh, one thing at a time. <laughs> one thing at a time. And, okay. Yeah, yeah. One thing at a time. This is the monster Please, that we've God, created over the years. One thing at a time. Okay. All right. <laughs> God damn it. Yes, Mike. Our bats. <laughs> oh. Um last week, yes. we played the Fast Lane Challenge. Remember this? Uh-huh. We oh, gave all the uh-huh. all the many viewers a chance to send in who's AJ Styles going to beat at Fast had, Lane to retain few... his championship and how long will it take him to do so? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and we had a lot of um we had a lot of responses. Entries. It was yeah. great. No one correctly predicted AJ Styles was going to pin Kevin Owens, so we had to go to the tiebreaker. And oh, uh, Brandon uh, was the closest with man. his uh, time. And uh, so he gets to make the first move this week. And his move is that he is. Oh, by the way, uh, hats off to Larry. I'm injured. So Larry is going to draw on the uh, board. Uh, what, I, I left it in my bag. It's okay. Well, Don't worry. Yeah, I'm hurt. You got to take care of yourself. Yeah. We got okay. a Bob Orton situation. Yeah, you got a Bob, Bob Orton, Orton Greg the Hammer Valentine situation going on. Um, Greg Valentine? <clears throat> And so uh, Brandon's move is that Brown as well with the he is going to Brandon's move is he is going to remove Sailor Moon, Ember Moon, and Kyrie Sane. Oh Oh, no! And he's going to replace them with (sighs) Sasha Banks and Bailey. All right, all right, all right. 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 Now the envelope. So I don't usually make moves in this thing, but Mm -hmm. there was one match that immediately came to my mind that I really would like someone to make. So I wrote on a piece of paper and I put it in that envelope and oh. if someone correctly guesses what's the uh ah. what's in the envelope, they'll get a bunch of rewards. There's sort of a reward system here that I will not get into because no one's gonna get this match because it's been five weeks and no one's close. But well, well yeah, some are closer than others. Anyway, uh Brandon uh did a guess. He uh, I, and I should share what his uh question was so that uh everyone else is aware of what he asked me. Um let me find his question so I make sure I don't misspeak. Uh, Brandon asked, uh, pertaining to the envelope, uh, are both superstars in my match on the card right now? And my answer was no. So we'll go from there. Um, Matt, Matt, I do have a question. All right. Could your match be currently made? Yes. Okay. Is it okay. an animal, a mineral, or a vegetable? Um, they're both humans. Oh, oh, that narrows it down. I mean, I'll open it up right now. Rob, you <laughs> well, got you something? Know, you know, it's not the rock. Yeah. He didn't say mineral or the, or the boogeyman. Mm-hmm. I don't really know. Wait, what's my the boogeyman? On? I who knows what the boogeyman oh, okay, is. Okay. Is my bike on? Yes. Um, okay. Yes. For somebody, yeah, I'm I was sorry. I'm altering myself. this a little bit. Don't uh, worry about okay. it. That's just on your headset. Yeah. Um, so what am I? What am I trying to? Well, you're 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 saying. Do you have a question or do you have a guess? I do. Um, Larry, do you have a no, question? No, I don't have. Yeah, I haven't been as involved in the conversation to know the answer. Are both your uh, both of the challengers on the card already? 
And the answer was no. Actually, oh, I it do was have no? a question. Yeah. Okay. Um, is one of the people on SmackDown? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, hold I've, on. Hold on. <laughs> Does anybody want to throw in a guess? I've Sorgi, you want to throw in a question mm. here? We might as well get all this out of the way now. Um, I think we should probably do this at the top of the <coughs> this show. It's a lot Matt, easier to do this now yeah, than yeah. to work Matt, our way through it slowly. Matt, I have a guess. Yeah, go ahead. Is it... Uh, EC3 versus Shinsuke Nakamura? No. Damn. I, I, I have a question. All right. Was, um, you said they're not... They're not minerals. They're, oh. Okay, yeah, not minerals. Good, good, good. But no, okay. <laughs> so you said not not all of the competitors are are currently on the card. Um, was one of them removed from another match? No. Mm. So it's somebody who hasn't appeared at all. At all. At all. How? Look at that! Right out of the gate, great question. Wait, you just wait, eliminated wait, like wait, wait. thirty people. Has not been removed. Now we know it's not Bart Gunn. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so it's it's that not it's not Bart Gunn? So it's not Butterbean, no. right? Butterbean's uh, not part of this. No, 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 no. No. <laughs> All right, I have a pre- I have a prediction. Is it Alistair Black versus Kevin Owens? No. <laughs> I I might have I'm trying to think. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, See, you guys have to bring up the first week of Mayhem Mania because you have yeah, to Yeah. One of those guys is is in the match. <laughs> what? One of those, one of those guys. First week one is is in his match. Is Who's it? got a guess? You guys are buzzing real uh, close right now. AJ Styles, good? Samoa Joe. No. Okay. Ooh. That was good, Sork. That was good. All right. We're good. Everybody? Everyone, get a guess in. No, I, I, I got no idea. Okay. Good job. Well, 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 you can ask I, later. It's okay. I got right. no idea. We got all business right. to take care of. All right. We're gonna do. Um, all right. So Brandon did his move. Uh, Rob, you're going to do a move. Sorg's going to do a move. Marcus, you're going to do a move. And Mad Mike is batting cleanup because the son of a bitch is using the Alex Cars rules again. Hey, it's not my fault. Oh, um, hey, some people are better at playing this game than others. Some yeah, who's the, only, who's the only one who's graduated a match so far? I, that'd be you so far. Oh, the trash talking continues. Oh. <laughs> there it is. Oh, I got... Oh, I Mike, got do you want to use your eliminator? <laughs> yes. Really? Yes. Okay, so w- if he graduated a match, he got an eliminator. Basically, Mad Mike can completely remove any single person he wants to from being used at all during this entire exercise. Hmm. Cool. Uh, for good. It comes in handy when you've got people like Larry coming in with Bart Gun. So Yeah. Um I I don't know what Larry's gonna do. I we're not letting Kid Rock be on this card. <laughs> <laughs> So nope. you are using your eliminator on a musician. Very good. Very good. <laughs> yeah, man. Weird man. things have happened, especially because I know someone somewhere in some universe wants to add Kid Rock and Rhino to that Double J match. We had a bad experience with a celebrity <laughs> match a couple of years ago, maybe <laughs> last year. I, I, I like, would have it, 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 it really caused a lot of... um. Paranoia. I, I would have had like, Kid Rock do the Undertaker entrance. Yeah. That, that yeah. match. There. Yeah. Yeah. See? American Badass. Now entrance. we can't. Now we can't. There now we can't. Ways. I'm. Kid Rock is the eliminator. I almost had hey, to be Mahabali. Don't worry. Shira. Limp Biscuits. I was, guy, I was thinking, you know, <laughs> Fred Durst is still doing something. Fred Durst <laughs> is still out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> we were get this train rolling. Uh, Rob, yes, please. Let's, uh, let's make a change to this card here, oh, buddy. Let's see here. Oh, and by the way, I should tell you guys that uh, Brandon is aware he has an eliminator too for winning the fast lane challenge, but he is—he's holding on to it. He's holding it. Oh, okay. Is he in the chat room? He could jump in at any time, and he could oh, use it. You so never know. he took out—he he took out Peyton and Billy. Uh, no, who, who did he take out? Ember and Kyrie, and replace of Sasha and Bailey. That's true. Mm-hmm. Okay. You got uh, this, Rob. You got this. Uh, can, can come we, on, Rob. You can, can do it come this. back around to me. Are you gonna pass? Uh, can we, I mean, if you want to pass, pass, I can roll? come back to you. Do we have pa- a pass roll? I'll, I don't know because I haven't really. I is this like press your luck? I, if you pass, then you have to use those spins. No, I'm kidding. Huh? <laughs> well, no, I'm just saying I haven't been as up on the conversation. You watch a lot of game show network. Don't you don't need. I mean, no. Yes, I do. Be up on the conversation. You just have to tell us what match you want to have, and just decide which thing on here you don't like the best. You like the least, and get rid of it. So. 
Oh, so we're getting rid of them. You got to get rid of something okay. to put something in. You got to oh. get rid of a wrestler to bring a wrestler. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Am I too loud? I'm sorry. See, that's that's okay. me. No, no, that's me. I adjusted you wrong. Okay, I'm fine. And I'm realizing my mistake. Yeah. Or, or you can I add can, a wrestler yeah. to a match, yeah. Or you can or you can take out a whole match completely and make your own. Yeah. Right. He I did. I, I kinda, swear. I mean, yeah. Marcus was there over nodding his head the whole time. I don't know where <laughs> Rob was. I have no uh, idea what's going on, guys. <laughs> we're, cr- we're creating an ambiance while he thinks of something. Yes. I'm just yes. filling. Phil, Phil. Best podcasting ever. You know, this is eerily strange. This is eerily similar to how Awful Show used to operate. They would always end with a game that had a lot of waiting for a person to answer because they're <laughs> contemplating things as I'm just saying things to vamp so there's not dead space on this podcast for the audio it's listeners. Sorry. I, 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 I think I've... I, think I was, I really, enjoying, good. I was <laughs> really enjoying it. All right, your... Rob, you have the floor. Okay. Uh, I'd want to add... We said it's a celebration, guys. Almas. Uh, Cian Almas to the uh, Samoa Joe versus AJ versus Adam Cole. There you go. To make it for the NXT. <clears throat> we'll handle that later. Yeah, okay. Titles come later. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, Stipulation yeah, things. No, no, no. That's the Patreon and the bank deal. So yeah. Yeah. That's okay, though. Good job. Good yeah. job, Rob. Yeah, that yeah, was a good yeah. pick. Yeah. Cien Almas. All right. Sorgi, you're up. Marcus is on deck. Hot damn. Let me see that list. So we're, let me see where we're at. See if anything hits me. Well, like, um, Sorg, if you need time to think, I've been told to ask Matt about his socks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! yeah. Well, kinda, you guys want to see my socks? I got them at Hot yeah, Topic. Kinda, what? Kind of curious about. It. Oh, you're such a. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, oh. They're nice, right? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's seen that on video. I didn't get. <laughs> I didn't get um, the Bullet Club socks because I didn't think I should wear them through airport security. No, 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 no. no. I, I'm not going to be able to Matt, do this. Are, I'm going to have to take Matt, a picture. Are we coordinating socks because I will get a pair of my. Socks. I was assured that you were bringing a Macho Man robe with you. Yes, so I'm I looking am. Looking forward to that. <laughs> I saw it on a Macho Man robe on sale at Toys R Us for some reason. They That's the one I currently size, own. Is it? And I think Ooh. I responded yes, by is. saying, if you think I'm dressing like the Hulkster to Mania, you are and sadly is, mistaken. And it is specifically the Macho Man and Zeus or, versus Hogan and, and um, Beefcake. Oh, I will dress I, up as I, Zeus. Hold on. I will do that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and, oh, my wife can dress as uh, Queen Sherry. It's perfect. Let's do it. <laughs> She can just like scream. Oh, Why is oh, her oh. Pur- that purse is not getting through customs? Is it? No, <laughs> That's right. Is this a brick? I hope you got pre check. As long as it's in a clear bag, Sorg, we will get it into the Superdome. You know what? Sorg, you um, know can what? You put wait, me wait, on wait, video wait. for a second. No, 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 hold on a second, because I got a pick. Uh-oh. I got a pick. I got something bubbling over here. I got mm-hmm. something bubbling. We wait. Does that say? Oh, Sasha and Bailey are against the iconic duo. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's a different story. That is a different story. But I think what we're missing is a little bit of uh, uh, I'm glad we eliminated the Michigan representation due to the eliminator. But I think I want to bring a little bit of Cleveland in this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, oh. No. Um, and I got to go friend of the show. So we're going to we're talking Johnny Bananas. Yeah. Johnny Gargano About time. belongs at WrestleMania. No, no, don't take the card away. Don't take the card. Away. I just don't need the card. Um, can I replace the Bellas with Johnny Gargano? <laughs> Can you replace? No. Wait, wait, wait. Is uh, your question? Do you want to? You want to swap the Bella Twins for just Johnny Gargano so that it's I just want to John say it's Cena and, and Johnny Gargano, Gargano yes. versus the Undertaker <laughs> and Lay Cool? I think Gargano <laughs> That's is a easily solid worth. I, mean, I, I, I consider think, the Bellas I mean, a tag can, team. They so, consider, yeah. They're practically one person, right? They're practically sure, one. Sure, person. They're practically what? one person. Okay, then I'm going. In that case, in that case, I love I'm this definitely idea. Definitely going to. Um, I mean, I think I'm sorry. I'm a fan of Almas, hmm. but Johnny Gargano, I think, would be more interesting in that uh, four-way match with AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, and Adam Cole. So you are like completely stomping on Rob's move that he spent like a good five to ten minutes <laughs> working on. <laughs> Actually, once you mentioned Cleveland, it made me think of something else. What are you but... thinking? Mm, what are you yeah. thinking? I'm not putting J-Rock in this thing. No, I guess, I no, guess... no. Rob's oh, coming back next week. but it's somebody else. <laughs> it was, yeah, 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 I like that too. I guess Rob uh, will be back next nah, week. We got we to yeah, keep them yeah, together. Yeah, we got to yeah, keep yeah. them together. Yeah. Rob, I hope, you, I hope your, your Tuesday's cleared. Yeah. <laughs> See you next week, Rob. <laughs> I guess. I, this, this is my play to get Rob back yeah. in the studio next week. Good move, good move. Um, okay, uh, Marcus, you're up, and Mad Mike is so, on deck. Does this make sense to you, Marcus? Yeah, so far. Here's my one question, because right. I don't know if I, this is a legal move. Can I just... We'll find out. Can I just switch to people? 
that are yes. already on the card. Yeah, nobody does this anymore. That's a good move. Everybody's and not enough people do that. This. But that's I a very I good. I too move. would put the Bellas with. Undertaker. You could swap. Them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I'm I'm very considering putting switching just Undertaker and the Bellas, and making a Bellas and Lake Cool versus John Cena and the Undertaker. Since we've already established the Bellas are one person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they're a tag team. They're well, single I mean, unit. It works. Guys, I mean, true. and the Undertaker versus the Bellas and Lake Cool. Yeah. That would be a real interesting match. <laughs> yes. Here's the thing: I got, I got, Love therapy. I got two moves that I'm interested in. Yeah, but I know I can't do two moves. You can only do one. I know. But I tell you what, you have to come I back. I know. Oh my god! If you make a move bad Sorry. enough, man, might might come in. No, because I got a really a good. <laughs> I got a really good idea for a tag match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I have been talking for a while about a dream match of mine mm-hmm. that we could make. Um, you gotta blow out a whole another match in order to make that happen. I know, but here's what I'm gonna do: is I'm I'm gonna do a switch. Okay. All right. Um, I would like to switch, uh, Oscar with Batista. Oh, oh man! All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's still wait, works. wait, 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 wait. I still oh, like it. <laughs> wait, wait. So yes. break that down. What do we have now? No, no, no. We're gonna get. All right, so Batista will fight Brock Lesnar, yeah. and it will now the four way will now be Asuka versus Bobby Lashley versus Braun Strowman versus Drake Maverick. Yes, I think and, that and makes of course that the contest to see who could throw Drake Maverick the farthest. I think that makes that four way <laughs> much more interesting. I like it. Yeah, I like it. Oh my god! And I think it makes my next week's pick by maybe a little more more interesting. <laughs> That's okay. I, uh, Rob, Rob, yeah, I thought yeah. of something else for almost that yeah. makes a little more sense actually. Oh. So. Yes. Off air, I'll tell you my tag match, and if anyone wants to use it later, you can use it. Later. You know what? You could tell me my tag, your tag match on Talking Mayhem Mania. Cool. Okay. Record after this show's done. <laughs> Available on Better Podcasts everywhere. Um, Mad Mike, you're up. What? Uh, uh, yeah, sorry about that, guys. That's up. the lost episode. It'll be, be up. No, I'll put it up. Somewhere. I'll put it up. It's, the, it, so, it's called the Ghost uh, Tape. Yeah. That's right. Mike. Oh, we taped fuck. over it. We always taped over the tapes. Jesus. Um, We're thinking of syndication. Sweet cheese and crackers. 105 votes. Wait, 100 and... Wait, 95 votes? Mm-hmm. Sorry, there's a special election recount. happening if you guys Back are listening on. later. Recount, guys. We're going to do a recount. God. Apparently, the entire country depends on this uh, special election that's happening here uh, just south of us in PA. Yeah, so. Go home and watch. As I saw someone tweet earlier tonight, the entire country's opinion... Of uh, the the state of this country will now be determined by a handful of voters in Bethel Park. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, go home and watch the HBO uh, original movie Recount, starring uh, Kevin Spacey, to understand what this is really about. Uh, yeah. All right. Speaking Speaking of of let's do it. The, the HBO I, original I film moves. Paterno will be de- <laughs> will be debuting on HBO shortly as well. <laughs> Sorg, wow. Sorg, I, I know my move. Rob, you getting I, residuals I on my, that? Uh, no. <laughs> I just love Al Pacino. Did you, did you work on that one? No. <laughs> Ah, good job. By the right. way, uh, Outsiders now available on Netflix or Hulu or something. All right, Mad Mike. <laughs> I, I have my move. I have my move. Well, well speak up, man. <laughs> I'm just going to plug I, your shit. I'm yeah. trying to. Sorg is plugging shit all over the place. Uh, yeah, plug the, the shit right. that don't even all belong right. to us. There are matter. so many of... of this has probably been the most energetic round of me. Every media. match <laughs> has been altered except two. So I can't, I can't change any other match without... Um, giving someone else an Alex Carr's rule for next week. Yeah. So what I'm going to do... Have double Alex Carr's rule? Yeah, we had one a couple no, of weeks wow. ago, yeah. Uh, so what I'm going to do, and I'm sorry, Beast Man. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I'm not taking it away. I am not taking it away. Are we adding Kid Rock? You're daring to suggest I'm, you're going I, to improve it? No, I'm adding to it. Because there are a lot of great vocalists in this match. You have the road dog, Jesse James, who sang with my baby tonight. You have the Honky Tonk Man, who, of course, sang the Honky Tonk Man theme song. And I'm going to add, because, damn it, he deserves to be on Mayhem Mania if he's not going to be on WrestleMania. I am adding the tag team of Rusev Day. Yes. Hold I'm on, hold on Mike. Day. I got to check something. I got to check something. Uh oh. Make sure. What day is today, Sorg? I'm checking my calendar over here. It's, and, uh, uh, yep. Happy Rusev Day. It's yep. Rusev Happy Day. Happy Rusev, Rusev Day, day everybody. Rusev day. It's only Rusev Happy Day for about Rusev another day. hour until it's Rusev Day. Yeah. Yeah. So. So I had to make that, that, that move on Rusev Day. 
All right, let's uh, run down what we've done to our card here. (laughs) (laughs) Eviscerated this card. Aiden English is the other guy. Yes. The Shakespeare of Song and the Lion of Bulgaria. He might be in one. Write that out. The Shakespeare of Song and the Lion of Bulgaria. That's not going to fit on the graphics. <laughs> oh, by the way, thank you. Shout Wouldn't out, you like by the way. Garza try? The awesome uh, Antonio Garza of the uh, Wrestling Revolution uh, net. Oh, that's we should way. give Garza a move oh, on Mayhem. Yeah, Mayhem yeah. Mayhem How is it not? We got to give him something. Garza could walk in the door right now and we give him a move. Except that he lives in El Paso. He could jump on the Skype right now and we give him a move. Yeah, it's true. This is true. Hey, Aim- Eamon's commenting on the election going on there. Who knows? Garza hey, I could give, move. I would give Garza Eamon a move right now, too. Garza could we speak. We don't know. Yeah. yeah, Eamon's working on his own mania right now, so. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Hashtag PMS. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. What are you talking whoa. about? He means Political mayhem Political show. Mayhem show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, I was thinking oh, maybe Undertaker yeah. and Terry Runnels and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and Jacqueline. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Uh, no, we're not allowed to invoke the name of Sean Stacey on the show. No, I'm really disappointed that, that this... Was he really a part of the unit? <laughs> Back what? to Mayhem what? Mania. What? He was meat. Some could argue he was the unit. He was. <laughs> he was. He was meat. Yeah. Um, exactly. All right, here we go. Honky Tonk Man and Rockabilly versus Jeff Jarrett and the Roadie versus Rusev and Aiden English. <laughs> Samoa Joe versus AJ Styles versus Adam Cole versus Johnny Gargano. Yes. Billy Kay and Peyton Royce versus Sasha Banks and Bailey. Batista versus Brock Lesnar. Elias Ooh. versus The Rock. Asuka versus Bobby Lashley versus Braun Strowman versus Drake Maverick. Finn Balor versus Aleister Black. And John Cena and the Bella Twins versus The Undertaker and Lay Cool. I feel like we took a step backwards this week, Sorg. But here's hoping. <laughs> we stepped somewhere, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. That's it. All right. Uh, you all right? Uh, Are you all right? <laughs> Wait, let me check. <laughs> it goes from this to dealing with the fallout. 2,000 absentee ballots? Oh, no. Oh, no. It just goes on, doesn't it? It, it never ends. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. So Does that mean the Hall of Famer is going to be back soon? Which one? <laughs> 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 yeah. All right. Moving on. <laughs> do, you, do you have a wrap-up for this? Are we done with the segment? I'm done with my, oh, okay. I've done my thing. I, uh, Thanks for supporting well, Mayhem Mania. Out, uh, stay tuned for Talking Mayhem Mania. Stay tuned for That's Talking right. Mayhem Mania. The hottest damn show on the internet that's what i was waiting for all right, all right. give a shout out to our friends at scarehousepodcast.com our good friends are uh scaring people uh, most recently in, over valentine's day what that's a what it says number wait did we replace number where, indie wrestling.us <laughs> where you can check out rise wrestling with a y, y. you know a shout out to what scar scarehouse while we're at it great q a go over on their facebook uh uh from today uh, as Facebook Live with a great QE with Dutters. Some of you may know her. She's participated in this show, or at least our Instagrams. Um, but also check out Indie Wrestling US, uh, where you can sell, check out some great stuff. The last three Rise Wrestling shows with a Y are a part of that, including a lot of stuff that we've talked about, including Marcus Mann's a part of that as well. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's exciting. It we, is. Got, we have wrestling product. Yeah. To sell. Yes. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> you know. It only took a year. <laughs> uh, and, of course, our other friends like the International Wrestling Cartel, like uh, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, Premier Wrestling up in Cleveland, uh, CKCW, uh, that just did a lot of crazy stuff with the uh, Eric Bischoff uh, as part of their IP review and everything. Uh, making waves, and, and, and we don't just, you know, uh, sell some of the groups that we work with. We are, we're really trying to uh, 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 talk about indie wrestling. Of course, the Indie Mayhem Show is a part of that, a part of this network, and where that was uh, some great interviews. Most certainly, we just released our 200th episode of the Indie Mayhem Show with Facade. I almost gave his old name. Uh, <laughs> Michael the Bomber Facade, yes. Uh, who just came back from India after um, um, training people in India at the Great Kali School. Um, in one instance, so we showed, showed an image of him FaceTiming with Jinder Mahal. Yes, that's the thing that happened. Find out why and how. Uh, and the Indie Mayhem Show 200 over at wrestling.us. Like I said, Rise Wrestling premiere. Uh, a lot of great stuff, including some uh, Legend of Virgil and the traveling uh, 
Legend of Virtual on his traveling merchandise table, the Montreal Theory, Finding Zach Gowan, some great shows there. Uh, AJ Styles, the missing matches, and just a great history with all those promotions and a lot of great guys like Johnny Gargano. Uh, best of with Prime Wrestling. History of Prime Wrestling is part of that as well. With a lot of guys you see here on uh, uh, many of the promotions on television across. Best of Dalton Castle making ways over there in Ring of Honor. Just released this past week, Best of Raymond Rowe before the machine uh, with IWC. Some great matches there uh, as well. So go check that out. And rumor is there's going to be a certain drifter premiering on IndieWrestling.us in the coming weeks. So check it out. Sign up for the newsletter so you get updates on that and the uh, Wrestling Mayhem show uh, over at IndieWrestling.us. And check out that sale going on right now. St. Pat 2018 for uh, 50% off select video on demand, digital downloads, uh, including the high stakes uh, from Wheeling, which includes Ricky Steamo, includes Ryback, includes uh, uh, Jerry the King Waller against a friend of the show, Jackson Argos. And other titles fall out. Anything that includes a high stakes championship title match it, or the high stakes uh, uh, shows uh, is included 50% off, including IWC's fallout, IWC winner takes all. Uh, that's St. Pat 2018 over at IndieWrestling.us. Guys, it's time to find out what did you learn from wrestling this week? I, you know, can I start? I usually go last. It's your show. But I learned. Thank you. Uh, I learned that uh, uh, NXT in Florida had a small armory. It's probably the second best indie wrestling show I've ever been to. <laughs> it's it's a lot of fun. Also, it's interesting to um, uh, attend a WWE uh, promoted show with less people in attendance than every Pittsburgh wrestling show I've been at in the last month. So, uh, no, I, I, I uh, fortunate the day I got into... Uh, the Tampa and Lakeland area, there was a NXT show. And these are one of those classic ones you always hear about. You see on like Breaking Point where they're putting up the ring. And it's uh, it's 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 like three rows of fans. It was $10 general admission. You guys remember what NXT is like when it comes to town here at SageAE, right? Where we couldn't get a ticket. It was $10 for me to walk in and sit in the back row of three rows. Yes, I have a question from the from, from Matt Carlins. I was watching... Um... Your Facebook feed. Yes. When you were at the NXT show. And I was looking at all the pictures you were taking. And I was like, wow. Those are all the people I was hoping to see when NXT came to Pittsburgh. <laughs> and they didn't show up. This is I true. wonder how much Sorg paid to get into that armory. $10. $10. $20 for the first two rows. So I could see Aleister Black in Pittsburgh. Pay top dollars to see Aleister Black in Pittsburgh. I enjoyed fight that. God knows who. Yeah. Still forget his name. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember okay. either. Wasn't it Gunner? Was it? No, no. Yeah, I think it was. It was like. Gunner? I think it was. Sorry, Gunner. Was, was it him? Because I think he was on that show, but I don't. Chad. Yeah, I don't I, Chad something. I don't believe. Is you. that Gunner? I don't know. Mike. <laughs> Mike. Mike's. Mike's forgotten all the Impact Wrestling stuff, especially Gunner. Uh. <laughs> anyways, no, it was funny. Yeah, it was like Can Candice. Candice. Uh, what was it? Candice and uh, uh, Kiri Kiri Sane. Um, and, and this like nerdy girl named Jesse. So it was, I, we haven't seen her yet, but apparently she's been doing this nerd gimmick since like September, maybe November. Um, you know, uh, Shayna Baszler was in that match. That was the main event was a six woman tag hmm. where I knew three of the people in it. <laughs> so that kind of gives you the idea. Uh, they had a UK championship match of, uh, of, uh, Pete Dunn against, uh, Oni Lorcan. Holy crap. Uh, it, it, and, EC3 was a part of that show against Cassius Ono. Um, it was a lot of fun. Yes. And here's the reminder that Bobby Snyder has put in the, uh, Bobby FJ Tom put in the chat that they're coming to Johnstown. They are coming into Johnstown. I think this is going to be more of their it's... like kind of stage E type tour. Like, I don't think it's, I, I don't know because I feel like they have so many going on. Well, they have so many NXT people that they can do like two or three tours at this point. And I think, is it the same week? Or wait, yeah. What is the date on that? Because I think I might have it mixed up. I think like Indiana is getting like a WWE house show, like a SmackDown that might house be too. show, the di- the day before SmackDown in like Pittsburgh. I just I think I got those mixed up though. Because when are they coming to Johnstown? Um, that is that that's like third week in 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 April. I think. Oh, okay. So, so. it's a bit removed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's it's like yeah, four twenty two 
mm-hmm. says uh, Bobby of J-Town. Because he's the J-Town is I can watch NXT in my hometown. Uh, yes. So, no, it was a lot of fun. If you get to Florida, look to see, you know, if they're they're doing one of those tours, like an armory tour, you know, kind of like that. And uh, it, you won't be disappointed. It's it's not going to be like the full multimedia presentation. There is a curtain. There's some lights. There's a curtain. And the lights usually blind you if you sit in the wrong spot because <laughs> they're, they're, they're kind of low. Uh, but uh, not too much different. It, 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 it's, it's a lot of fun. Again, it just it has that indie wrestling feel. Uh, but with the thirty-five dollar T-shirts, so yeah, because it was interesting seeing, like, in your pictures, like having been to several NXT shows and having been to a lot of indie shows, seeing it looks like it's pictures from an indie show, but with yeah, <laughs> with know, the, the WWE logo, the, the everywhere. NXT branding. Like, you know, what is this? What is this indie wrestling that uh, that 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 you know yeah. bought all this WWE stuff to hang up? I don't mm-hmm. know. I don't know if I understand th- this this concept here, mm-hmm. but uh, <laughs> yeah. There, like, there's no room for anything else, so it's Although, literally just banners. I love, by the way, I have the picture. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't have the right one connected to show you guys on the video. Uh, but you can look at my feed on, on uh, Instagram, Sorgatron over there, um, or, or my Facebook page. Um, but uh, our friend Rick Diamond from uh, Black Diamond says, let them, <laughs> let them know that you know a guy that can take them over the top with Chinese lights and bed sheets. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but no, it was a lot of fun uh, to, to check that out. And uh, yeah, it was pretty good. So de- definitely recommend that. Let's go next. Yeah, oh, is that is that a nod for me? <laughs> Sorry. Hey, uh, I learned that uh, Shane McMahon doesn't respect the brand split. No, apparently not. Not at all. Yeah. I was say we glossed over that he's just hanging at out. At least in the he could have done his like dope behind Vince and like hit his face. Whoop. Oh. oh no. Standing there like a doofus. Although I did like like Roman, just like you're not supposed to be here. <laughs> like you just kind of like yeah, <laughs> step aside. No, Shane's just there like. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. He's intimidating. All right. What about you, Rob? What did you learn from wrestling this week? I learned that I can say I just watched Fastlane today and that <laughs> I I can skip the first like two and a half hours of the show and really miss nothing. Just get that, just get that John Cena match. The main event was great. Yeah. But yeah, then yeah, there was, was other <laughs> like they, they had the Ronda Rousey package that went what, like ten minutes and that's yeah, not even weird. that show. There was a lot you of know. raw happening on, on that show. So when you throw everybody, you know, interesting in one match, <laughs> it it yeah. kind of makes it and they're doing away with that, I right? Enjoyed that. With the Rusev Nakamura match was really yeah, it's good. over yeah. after Mania. Yeah. Rusev yeah. Nakamura yeah. was good. Yeah. The tag match was amazing until the Budget Brothers came out, which mm-hmm. was also amazing, I thought. We didn't really talk about Fastlane, did we? Mm. <laughs> so, no. But but yeah, I kind of learned that a lot of those, you know, the the most biest of B shows, yeah, <laughs> could, yeah, you know, you can just see the main event and you're just fine. All right. What about you, Mad Mike? What'd you learn from wrestling this week? Oh, I learned so much this week. Um, I learned that WWE doesn't know who to name things after. What? Uh the the fabulous Mula Memorial Battle Royal should not be called that. <laughs> oh, that's a se- that's a segment I didn't finish last night. Hmm. Yeah, that's a it, thing it, happening. It, it should not be called that. It should be called the China Memorial Battle Royal mm. because she was the first woman in the Royal Rumble. Hmm. And someone else pointed this out to me on Twitter. Andre was the eighth wonder of the world. China was the ninth. So have both battle royals named after the wonders of the world from WWE. True. True. And also, and also, I learned it's bullshit that the Ultimate Delicia is next week and not at WrestleMania. Ah, uh, you don't want eighty thousand people watching a but, screen. I don't know. I want but to be, sorry, I'm going to be there. I want to watch that. I I think of it I like I want to watch that on a oh. fucking jumbotron. But I think it could be done like the the back the backlot brawl with Roddy Piper yes. and Goldust, where it could be like segments yeah, over yeah, the course yeah. of the show. Yeah, because and, they've got to have stuff between. Set up, you know, instead of having like that hour long, you've got a musical performance and some other bullshit going on in the third hour. You know, like it's they can spread out segments over the course of a show, ending with them, of course, ultimately being in the arena. And And, Vanguard One has teleportation powers. That's true. That's true. (laughs) I, I I mean, I think there could be a a, uh, deletion mania of sorts. Uh, Producer Missy, I learned something. Yes. Okay. I learned you're in the right place. I learned that Marcus and I have have something in common over here. Oh, um, I learned that I absolutely loved the John Cena segment <gasps> on this week's Raw. Whoa, he's so good! It was amazing. I was just like, "Oh my god, this is the best ever!" And the crowd was just eating it up, and mm-hmm. it was absolutely perfect. And it was one of those reminders of 
why I love wrestling. Everyone loved the John Cena segment because he was acting as a heel. He was John Cena. Yeah. He he was acting as a heel. It yeah. was like the full was, John it's Cena the same, experience. It's the same thing whenever he goes rap and calls out The Rock, it's the same thing. It's how he was acting in 2003, 2004 when yep. he was a rapper. And that's when we loved John Cena. Exactly. Marcus, man, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, I learned that uh, apparently. Uh, unbeknownst to all of us, uh, for years now, uh, Ireland has some sort of treaty with Wakanda uh, because uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you noticed. I saw this. I saw this. So this is, tell you, me more. If you're watching the segment with the bar, they get attacked by uh, the Miztourage and they get out of the ring and they turn around and out comes Titus World Wild to beat them up and Seamus just turns around and does a Wakanda forever salute. <laughs> <laughs> To Titus and is like, no, no, Wakanda forever, and then just gets his ass kicked. And then <laughs> I, I laughed, you know what? So goddamn hard. I saw the move, and I'm like, why is he gesturing yeah. at him like that? I it didn't connect. Yeah, in he my did. Head. A, he did Wakanda it's, forever. It's similar to what Seamus actually does to get pumped up, but that I when I saw it again and again, I'm like, oh my god, he yeah. fucking did Wakanda forever. He did Wakanda That's forever to try and like not get beat up. These are the guys that do a Dragon Ball Z uh, pose. <laughs> I want to point out. So yeah, I mean, they're they're on the level. They're yeah. definitely on the level. Yeah. So they're, apparently they're, Ireland and Wakanda have it. Yeah. <laughs> apparently Wakanda and Ireland have some sort of like uh, uh, treaty together. And Titus does, the, it, but Titus uh, worldwide does not honor it. No. Does not recognize <laughs> the nation <laughs> of, of Wakanda. The, uh, article it's Article it's worldwide. Five. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, worldwide. He's part uh, of the UN. It's everywhere. Yeah. Hold on. What was that, Mike? Wakanda helped him get over the potato famine. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Wow. Well, I've learned something that has nothing to do with wrestling this week. <laughs> yes. So what did the chat room learn? The, the chat room. Thank you. The chat room queued up completely right here in front of me. Bobby F. J. Bobby F. J. Town learned that my boo, Asuka, <laughs> is going to retire Andy Orton. Randy Orton? Oh, he wants to. I want my boo, Asuka, to retire Randy Orton. Oh, yeah. He was so... She was so that, that, was a, that was an unfair tease on SmackDown tonight, if anyone saw that. What? Charlotte and Asuka were in the ring cutting a promo on each other. You know, the mutual respect crap. And... <laughs> I was saying. Anyway, they were doing their thing and they are done with their promo and it's time to go to commercial. But no, they don't go to commercial. Randy Orton's music hits and he comes to the ring and I'm like, which of these two women is going to kill Randy Orton? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, Dave Bonner learned that uh, I learned patience is necessary when one is broken. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, John learned that uh, Corbin needs Rogaine. Aww. He's uh, trying. Tina, Tina, he's going to have a, a hair versus hair match sooner or later, I'm sure. Uh, Tina Keys uh, learned that Piggy James becomes Lake Hole 10 years later. That's so, that was so sad. Aw. Uh, need to go there. Bobby F. J. Town, uh, they're coming to Johnstown. Well, no, no, they, that's just some comment. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Alex Miller learned that the ultimate deletion is next week, and I want Husky Harris to come out of the Nexus with a Nexus shirt. Oh, I, we've yes. been calling this for yes. ages. If that doesn't happen. What the fuck are we even doing? How are they? I, how, if they could pull it off, if they could pull it off, but I think there's some more interesting stuff happening with that. Uh, Brandon learned that this year's mania, we could see both Shane and Stephanie McMahon on the card. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and so, the chills. So when, when although although so. if Shane has a tag team match against Kevin and Sammy, and his partner is Chris Jericho, I'll allow it. Mm. Is that Rob? I, I was going to say uh, that you said Orton came out during the the women's segment. And did he challenge for the? Uh, did he interject himself into the SmackDown women's title match? Because that is the championship he has not won. <laughs> <laughs> he's not a true women's. Grand Slam yeah. champion yeah. until he's won until he the wins. SmackDown Women's title. Yeah, that's yeah. all right. Uh, Alex also learned that uh, it feels good I'll to have. It. It. Yeah, <laughs> he also le yeah. I also learned that it feels good to have this much power uh, sponsorship. Uh, also, he's super excited for New Japan at the end of the month in his hometown. I think Long Beach, right? So that's that's awesome too. Yes, are you going, to... Producer Missy? Go ahead. Oh, okay. I mean, you're pulling. You're pulling the microphone with purpose. Uh, Marcus Mann, thank you for joining us. Oh, anytime. Where can people find you online? Okay. This. Oh. Sorry for interrupting. Well, no, it's all right. I'm not important. Did I miss another ad? Uh, oh, upcoming events. No. Oh, Marcus, we'll get events. to you. Don't worry about it. Uh, this is why up, I pulled the microphone. Coming over. up live <laughs> next week, Farnsworth will be joining us on the couch. 
interested to see his uh, uh, head spin at Mayhem Mania. Also, we're going to be talking with uh, Frankie Nelson on uh, March 25th, 7 p.m. special time for that week. Hey, uh, WWE's coming to town, so Tuesday might be a little... You might have to find something else to watch. Uh, but he's a uh, part of the Mania Club tailgate fundraiser for Connor's Cure. We're going to be uh, talking with him uh, about that and have some fun with him as well. And I don't know, I haven't talked to you, Matt. Maybe we'll do a special edition of Mayhem Mania if people are free for it that night. Yeah, we're going to try to set well, that we'll up. Try, we'll try to set something up. What night's up. that going to be? That's going to be uh, March 25th, a Sunday. So, what? I, 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 check local don't listings. Uh, we'll check with logistics. <laughs> and also, uh, Todd DeFagio of Idiot Radio on the Double D Podcast. Pits- City Papers, best podcast in Pittsburgh, will be joining us April 3rd. And, of course, if you're in the area, there's going to be a WrestleMania watch party uh, April 8th. And I will uh, live stream myself from a hotel room in California and where I'll be watching it. We, we had a fun revelation at Fastlane yes. that we had put out there that if the New Day won... Mm-hmm. We would have a pancake bar for We're gonna have a, our uh, Mania WrestleMania party. WrestleMania pancake party? Yes. Wow. Um, because they didn't win, however. No pancake party. We are going to have a pancake party. We are going to have a pancake party. That's also, not the rules. Well, because there was no decision. We're going to have a bludgeon cakes party? We're going to have, because of the, the bludgeon brothers and just that fun stuff, mm-hmm. um, with everything going on there it, it's going to be instead of bangers and mash oh no for, for the irish aspect of things it's also going to be pancakes and bangers is this why you were talking about sausage earlier yes oh okay that's what i learned <laughs> uh marcus yes where can people find you online um twitter uh at marcus man uh uh, BHS, uh, man with two N's. Uh, you can find me Facebook, just Marcus Mann. And then uh, Instagram, uh, the Markman6. I have three different handles. Try to keep up. Uh, also, find any of our Rise <laughs> stuff, uh, which I pretty much uh, pretty much take over our Rise social media, which is why you see stupid gifts all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Seems right. Yeah. I, and I was teaching people today how to make more gifts. Yes. I don't know if you noticed. I did. Um, <laughs> check out our Rise stuff. Uh, A lot of dancing. At Rise underscore wrestling on Twitter and Instagram, and then Rise Pro Wrestling on the Facebook. I'm sorry. New Day Pancakes and Day One Quiche. <laughs> I'm a Bobby That's pretty down. good. That is um, good. Yeah, check us out there. And then a uh, small throw plug uh, to uh, Remix Pro Wrestling down in Marietta. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to be down there in April, uh, on April 21st for their big show. Um, if you guys like monster shows, mm-hmm. Remix is putting a huge one on. Um, Pentagon Jr., Ray Phoenix, Emma. It's a huge show. Um, so check them out as well. Uh, they've been a really big, really good backer of, uh, me and rise. Definitely. And I believe it's still on there. I'm going to double check here in a moment. If you want a little bit behind the scenes of remix pro wrestling marking out, uh, yes. is available on Amazon prime for free. If you, if you subscribe to that, uh, and that includes friend of the show, uh, Magnum CK is a part of that. Yeah. And then uh, you know, a couple of people from the documentary were in studio a few months ago. I think we did talk about it in his interview. If you, if you track back to that interview, uh, with Magnum CK. Thanks so much. Uh, always a pleasure for you joining us. No, oh, yeah, we're, we have fun doing this. I guess. Yes, I guess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Less <laughs> ICP talk next time. Oh, Come on, geez. guys. Oh, Come on, geez. all of you. All of you. Rob, cameraman. Rob, can be seen. Well, ringside, probably at IWC this weekend. Yep. Yeah, it will have. Was it IWC seventeen? Gilberg versus Ellsworth. Yeah, that's gonna happen. Okay, I'm looking for. Are you looking forward to meeting the first ever Women's Money in the Bank uh, winner? I. Uh, <laughs> I am. I mean, half a, uh, yeah, it's uh, it'll be a thing. It's, <laughs> it'll be. I'm sure it'll be fun. Whatever, whatever it ends up being. But I love when like look- I, I think I, I was at the last show when Gilberg was there. I think I told you I thought it was a joke when I went back to the locker room and I had Gilberg up on the up on the door. You know, but then you go in there and oh no, Gilberg is actually in the locker room. I saw so, the sign, and like yeah. I went to Kish game, went by. I was like, "Am I allowed to go in there?" Like for some reason, in my mind, I'm like, "Oh, they completely gave him his own locker room." Then I'm like, "Yeah, it's fucking Gilbert." No, yeah. I want to go take a piss. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Wayne Gill is a legend. I mean, yes, but he's he was, he was a really super nice guy. He was in Natural fun, Born but... Killers. If you've seen that, really, he was yeah. 
him and Tatanka were well, they were on a TV having a match. Oh jeez. Uh, anyway, mainstream Matt is gonna go uh, save the universe. I can't. I, <laughs> Are you okay? They're gonna count the absentee ballots in Washington tonight. All night. Really? Long, really? All night long. I this is saw, like uh, I think I saw this episode. This is of like House when of you Cars. think WrestleMania is gonna end at eleven, <laughs> and it's like midnight, yeah. and like Roman and Hunter are still in the ring, and you're like, "Is this gonna end?" Soon? And then it ends, and you're like, "God, I still gotta watch is Walking Dead too." Yeah. <laughs> Larry's off camera, of course, hanging out. And uh, check out Girthcake Industries on your Twitter. Uh, and uh, until you give me something to plug, that's what you're getting. So so get that website done. Uh, <laughs> Turn your safe search on, ladies and gentlemen, and Mad Mike, Mad Mike for your day three. I I I I talk about wrestling on the Twitters. He tends I actually, to. I I do I do, and occasionally I'll post on Mayhem Show with the hashtag MM. That's right. And and I, I spoiled myself with what Takeover looks like down in New Orleans. Holy shit! <laughs> Holy shit! It's gonna be lit. Holy and I do shit. not use that word lightly. It's gonna be absolutely crazy you know how you know how the takeover shows recently you look at the card and you go well it doesn't look like much but i'm sure it'll be good no this is the one we go this "This is gonna be freaking awesome (laughs) this one should literally be called nxt takeover fireworks factory (laughs) (laughs) i'm like two weeks behind on nxt myself so i'm way behind on i I think i just got to work uh uh, chris hero came back oh (laughs) jeez I'm a little behind, guys. A little, a little bit. Little it it bit. was nice to see Sami Zayn finally win the. NFC yeah, it was <laughs> good, man. It was really awesome. <laughs> you know, hey, it was good. Wait I'd like to see. I want to see where Kevin they go with that. Owens shows up. Oh. oh. Uh, anyways, thank you so much, guys. Thank you, producer Messi. Thank you, everybody, over the chat room. We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.